Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and I'm here on Wednesday, September 28th to start my 2022 whip parade. Um, if you're new to the cross-stitching world, a whip is a work in progress. So I have quite a few of those, and it's fun to show them once a year because just to see if there's been any progress <laughs> and if there is what you did. So it's just fun to keep tabs on everything I have and it's nice to remember all of my projects because I do love them all. I started them for a reason because I like them. So this will be good to go through and see them all and share them with you. And I went through yesterday my whip parade from last year and I've started quite a few things <laughs> since last year and there's it feels like there's quite a few things that I have not yet worked on. But I know part of that is I haven't worked on it yet this calendar year, and my whip parades are in September now. So there are some things I'm like, oh, well, I probably worked on that at the end of last year, the last quarter of 2021, and I just, it's been out of my mind because my, my plans, you know, are for a calendar year. So it's a little off, but September is a much better time for me generally for doing this sort of thing because I have 96 works in progress at the moment, Last year I had, oh, what was it? I think it was like 79. So I've gained a few, but that's all right. <laughs> I do have a couple more that I would like to start in the next few months, but generally I am feeling like I want to just enjoy what I have and maybe try to finish a few things. We'll see. Um, I do have some finishes. So I'll start off with what I have finished since my last whip parade, which was published on December, not December, September 3rd, 2021. So I've had 11 finishes since then. Not all of them were started or shown in the last whip parade because they were started since that parade. So I tend to, if a lot of the things that I finish tend to be things that I've started recently, like they're, sh they're smaller pieces and so they get started and finished in a relatively short succession. A lot of that is due to being gifts or um, like stitch alongs with the fat quarter shop and I don't wanna get behind that sort of thing. Um, things that are just for me with no end date, never get finished, <laughs> but that's okay. The fun for me is in the process. So I'm okay with that for the most part. Um, so I will share my finishes. A lot of these I don't have physically because they were gifts. The very first one, I'll do it in order of finish. The, I finished on November 19th, 2021. The Leaning Tower of Macarons by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. This I should have in person because I gifted it to my daughter, but I can't find it and I forgot to ask her where it was in her room. She might know. I see her using it every once in a while, so I know it exists still. <laughs> but I finished this on 14 count perforated paper and I sealed it with some contact paper so that it's um, bookmarky and the threads won't get dirty or caught on anything and stuff. So she does use this and it's very cute. I made it for her because she likes Baby Yoda from the Mandalorian series and he was eating macarons at one point. So I thought that was really cute. The next one I finished was in December 5th, 2021. This was Autumn Beauties by It's So Emma. This was a stitch along, a mystery stitch along, I believe, with a fat quarter shop. And I jumped on it because it looked like something my sister would like. So I went ahead and made it and gifted it to her for Christmas. I made it into a pillow and gifted it to her. So this is another one. You'll just see a picture. I believe I started this after my last whip parade. So there won't be a before picture. This was a start and finish since last September. And then on December 10th, I finished letter L fairy. This one I had partially started last year so you'll see a before and after of this one but again I have gifted it to her because this is um my letter fairies I'm currently making I made one for myself first and then now I'm making one for each of my nieces for their high school graduation so I gifted two of them this year the E I finished at the end um last year I guess I showed that finish last year in my September parade and then the L got finished in December and I get to that this May. So my first one I can actually show in person is Ice Crystal. But I don't think 
I had started this yet either. I think this was like a, finished this on, on Christmas Day, 2021. So this is a little Mill Hill kit. I guess I'll use this. There we go. That I did mostly beads, but there is some cross stitching in there too. And it's a little ornament, but I haven't finished it yet. I'll probably finish this in December <laughs> when it's Christmas time again and I want to put it on my tree. So sometimes I've seen people where they cut it out and back it with felt and then you make the little, um, there's a little charm at the bottom that you can attach with a bead rope and make a bead hanger. Um, so we'll see if I do the felt on the back. Some people just leave it plain. So my back's not too bad. And I like to tuck in my ends neatly, so I might just leave it. We'll see. So that will hopefully get fully finished this Christmas. But that was a cute one to do. And I guess I can go over here. The next one was the Cozy Cafe Club by the Frosted Pumpkin Citry. And this one I did notice that I had, had started before. So here is this one. And... I, this was a mystery stitch along for 2021, so I think I was probably a little bit behind last year in September, but overall it was a, you know, one mug came out per month kind of situation, and I finished it, I think, when did I finish it? Yeah, January 14th, so it was pretty close to the new year. I wanted to get that off my plate, and I enjoyed this. I, I adjusted a few of the names um, of the drinks to accommodate my tastes because I'm not a coffee drinker. So this one said coffee. I put hot tea. This one said peppermint. This one was peppermint cocoa. This one I think was raspberry mocha and I changed that to cocoa. This was already Earl Grey chai cider. What else did I change? Oh yeah, pumpkin spice latte. I changed it to tea latte. So yeah. So that was cute. Oh yeah, this is 25 count prim vintage cloth one over one full cross. All the called for DMCs except the border, I switched to some fancy flosses that were similar. And yeah, and I told you about the slight personalizations. And it has some beads in it. So since there's some beads here, I just used what I had in my stash and I tried to go for petite beads because um, this is one over one on 25 count. So a full, full size bead would have been enormous. <laughs> So I tried to pull for my petite bead stash in colors that were similar to what was called for. And then the Prim Stitch series, I noticed when I was sharing my last whip parade, this is a series by It's So Emma also with the Fat Quarter Shop. And it was a year long stitch along that ended last July, but I, for some reason, got stuck on the last one on number 12 and I hadn't finished it yet in September. So I finished this one in February 28th. So I'll share real briefly the whole pack. There's a set of 12 and you could do them all in one fabric or I made them separate because I'm planning <laughs> to sew them all together into a, like a doll quilt and I just haven't done it yet. But here I'll just briefly show these. I won't, I don't know the names of them. I showed, shared the names of them last year because I still had all the patterns with me. <clears throat> These were already done already, but since it's a whole set, <clears throat> I figure I'll, I'll share them too. These are these were pieces that were, um, they're designed with full crosses, solid color thread with either DMC or Ari Floss. And I used the Ari Floss because um, I was gifted the box of colors, but I decided to zhuzh it up a bit and included some specialty stitches instead of the cross stitches in some places. So mine will look a little different than the cover pictures, but the color placement and everything is the same. And then second to last, the fuzz. And then this is the last one that was not yet finished when I had my last whip parade, hand and heart to God. And I did this, the heart with the specialty stitch and the leaves and the little diamond in there. So yeah, that was the last one. So now this project is officially done as of February. So if I can get my act together, I could make that into a little doll quilt for my daughter to play with. Um, 
I have another quilt project coming up that I'm stitching along, sewing along with the Fat Quarter Shop cut starting in November. And that's gonna go for a few months. So this may not happen for a little while still, but that's okay. I'll share it on my regular channel um, updates if and when it ever happens. <laughs> Hopefully sooner than later before my daughter outgrows playing with toys. So let's see, what's next? Hummingbird by Mill Hill. This was my second Buttons and Beads kit that I finished. And this one was a start prior to my last whip parade, so there'll be a before and after. And um, yeah, this was a fun one. You can see this color blends in quite a bit with the perforated paper. I used all the kit, everything. There's a little bead button here. And I actually just switched this out in the frame that goes on my dresser because I had my winged monarch in here still and I just had never switched this out. And I figured the last week or so I was thinking, you know, this would probably be a little bit closer to a fall look than fall and winter than winged monarch since we're ending spring and summer and going into fall and winter and I only have two <laughs> at the moment. So this will be my fall and winter buttons and beads kit for the frame. And then I'll pull the winged monarch back out in in like March or something whenever I'm uh, ready to switch. I have another one on the go, but it is nowhere near done yet. <laughs> so there you go. So I'll show that in my whip parade because it's, it's still a whip. My next one is Summer Home by the, It's So Emma. This is another one by the with the Fat Quarter Shop that was like a mystery stitch along, and this one I believe Autumn Beauties I knew they gave me the pattern ahead of time, but this one I. They gave me the option of keeping it a mystery and stitching it with everybody and I chose that because I like I like mysteries. So I went ahead and made this and I thought this turned out very cute, home sweet home. And I think, when did I finish this? Hummingbird I finished on March 26th, Summer Home finished on 6-6, uh, June 6th. This is on their, the called for white pine board 14 count Ada. It's a printed printed fabric, so it's white on one side with the pretend wood grain on the one the other side. All the called for specialty stitches, specialty floss, just kidding. It is all regular cross stitches. And yeah, two two strands. I might be have might have missed that on some of these. I'm not used to that for finishes, because I've already shared all the details before. But the um hummingbird is also two strands of 14 count. <clears throat> um I think I was thinking of maybe gifting this to my mom, similar to the Autumn Beauties I gave to my sister. I might give this one to my mom because historically she collected a lot of Home Sweet Home stuff and she likes the color teal. So now that I'm bringing this out, that's a good idea. I need to get on that and maybe gift this to her for Christmas. Just like I gifted Autumn Beauties to my sister last Christmas. Good thing I'm looking at this because <laughs> probably would have forgotten I had wanted to do that. Um, the next one is Amazing Grace, which is another gift I've already given. This was for a lady in my church, and she loves this. And I had not yet started it last year, so there'll be no before picture. It was a start and finish um, since my last whip parade. I made this based on a My Big Toe Designs chart. They have a pattern which, with the, all of the words of the hymn and several motifs and a pretty border, but it is very large, and I knew I didn't have that much time. To spend on this and so I decided to rechart it. I made the letters backstitch letters so they'd be a lot smaller. The original design is cross stitch only letters and picked three of my favorite motifs, omitted the border altogether and this is what I came up with and I used some specialty stitches that, not specialty stitches, I keep saying that, fancy floss um, for my stash that were similar to what was called for. One over one on 28 count ivory jobelin I think. And yeah, she loves it. She put it up immediately <laughs> after I gave it to her. So that was a good gift. And then the next one I finished, that was the Amazing Grace was also done in June, June 8th and gifted for her birthday. My next one is By the Window in the Morning. And this is one that I had done, um, I had started since, since my last whip parade. So you'll see a before and after of this one as well. How do I get this out of here? Yeah. 
There we go. So I'm, I framed this. It's up in our room and celebrating our 20th anniversary. I adjusted the colors slightly. I changed the couch to be tan and, or beige instead of pink. I made the nighttime scene so I could go ahead and use this quote by Ernest Hemingway. And a couple of the other colors I toned down. Changed their hair colors a little bit, things like that. So yeah, love how that turned out. That was an 18 count Devosa in like a beige color. And then my last finish I just shared on my last update video. This is Country Cups, the England version, upside down. <laughs> and I just finished this on September 25th, 2022. And this is on 32 count Blue Whisper linen. Belfast linen um, and Weisweiger. And this is also a printed fabric. So like one side is very, it's really hard to see. So normally you can kind of see it's a little more cloud cloud looking with modeling and then this side is, is plain. So yeah, this was from mybobbin.com. It's called Country Cups England because they have a bunch of different country cups and I don't remember what all the countries are, but turned out really pretty. And I stitched this for my birthday and for my trip to England, along with Dawn Frosty X Stitch's birthday. And we both enjoyed working on this. And it's done now. So that's exciting. All 11 finishes since, since September 1st of last year. So that's good. I have, I'll move those over prepare for the first big category. So I have celebrate, separated my 96 projects in two categories like I did last year. Everything's alphabetical because <laughs> that's how I roll. I have alphabetical categories and alphabetical within the categories by title. So first category is fancy lady and then I have full coverage. A new category this year that I separated out from my other category is a no background full coverage because I'm I've got eight of those already. I've been doing that a lot more lately where I take a piece that's originally supposed to be full coverage and then I remove the background. I've got eight of those already and I have plans for at least one more. So I figured they needed their own category and then I have other including one counting canvas piece and then sampler <laughs> which are as samplery as I get. So the full coverage category is the largest with 31 projects currently and I will probably film that one tomorrow because I'm currently working on one for um, for my regular stitching and I think I could get to my WIPCO goal today, this, this afternoon and evening. So I'm going to wait and film the full coverage chunk tomorrow. So I'll probably film Fancy Ladies today and then one or two of the other chunks and film full coverage and whatever's left tomorrow. So hopefully get this all compiled by Friday, by the end of September, <laughs> and that'll be fun. So let's get started. First one in the fancy lady category is Adia, the Garden Fairy by Mirabilia. And this one is on 32 count, likely called for dirty linen, but this is started before before I took, kept track and I had these all in order downstairs but there's no way to do that up here Let's see. here it is so these I have all of my fancy ladies on a whip go board this year so some of them have gotten attention already and some of them will get attention before the end of the year but may not yet have so i'm curious some of these may not have before pictures so as with any of my pic pictures in this entire video um if it, if it doesn't have a before picture i may put in a little note saying no progress just to be clear but um i feel like there's going to be more of those than there was last time so here is this one this is adia the garden fairy She's pretty. This is again, 32 count, two over two, full cross. And I don't know if I've done any more on her. I might have some in her dress maybe. I'm not sure. 
And now I'm hearing Smokey again, just like Monday when I filmed my update video. Smokey is, she'll sleep out in the hallway and then she, after enough time has passed, if she still hears my voice in here and the door is shut and she can't be in here, that's terrible. <laughs> so I think I need to go let her in one moment. All right, I'm back. Wouldn't be a stitching mommy floss tube without a cat. <laughs> Okay, my next one is Ashley's Roses, also by Mirabilia. This is one that was called for Whipgo in September, but since I went on vacation and then wanted to finish my vacation cross stitch, I didn't get to it yet. So there's probably no progress on this, but I hope to pull it out in October. So hopefully before the next whip parade, it will be something. This is on another 32 count linen. I think it's cream. And this will be an up and down before and after if there is progress, which there may not be. I don't think so. Because I think I remember commenting on this being her hand and maybe next time I work on this, I might go find her face and then finish the top. I don't think anything has changed, but soon <laughs> I can hopefully get back to this and give it a little bit more attention. My whip go goal for my fancy ladies is three days. So that's why I couldn't really just squeeze it into September because it's meant to have three days and I have two projects that are meant to have three days and um, there's just not enough days left. <laughs> so I chose my full coverage pieces to work on at the end of the month here, which is just a stitch count because um, that's a little more flexible. Next, I have my Celtic Ladies sampler, which is a collage I put together of, no, don't do that. Get off, she's crumpling my paper. Um, a collage I put together of the Celtic ladies, seasonal ladies from Lavender and Lace. Just took portions of them and put them all together. Um, yeah, this is it. This one I do believe I have progress from last time because I started each chunk at least a little bit last year. Smokey is not helping. So here it is. I don't have anything quite big enough to put behind this. I may need to get a board up here before too long for some of these things. But as you can see, I have part of spring. This is winter. I did all the letters for winter and I have the start of the heads of summer and autumn. But that's about it. And I haven't really worked on it. I don't think I've worked on it yet this year. So it may still come out for Whipgo at some point. I don't think it has yet. I think I just have my seasonal start starts on each chunk from last year. Okay, Christmas Elf Fairy. I do remember working on this one a little bit. Um, I don't know if I had started this. I think this might be a new start since last time. So this is a small Mirabilia. It was one of the, they, she has a series of these little ones that are, that were sold exclusively as kits, um, along with the gentle art threads. I think it was gentle arts, um, Crescent Color Works, Crescent Color Works, Crescent Colors, which is now Classic Color Works, um, Crescent Colors and Fabric. I did not necessarily need their color choices, um, so I believe it was Terry Lee Crafts finished this and passed passed a stash of just the pattern and shared that with me. So I have kitted it up with my own fancy flosses that are similar and my own fabric and I'm enjoying that. I'm using a sparkly fabric which is fun. So this is on 32 count raw silver Belfast and this is where I'm at with that one. So cute. So one over, uh, two over two, just like all my fancy ladies. And I believe there's some whisper in her hat. And yeah, I did, I did work on this a little bit. This over spring break, I think, is when it was pulled for Whipgo. I remember working on this um, on vacation, I think. <laughs> but this is fun. It's very pretty fabric, very Christmassy. So there's that one. This one should be shouldn't take too long to finish. This is so tiny, but, um, 
Cottage Garden Fairy is my next one. I just worked on this uh, in August, so it's just got a, still a, just a very small amount done on it because it's a fairly recent start. This is on 32 count dappled hollow Lugana by Under the Sea Fabrics. And here is where I've gotten to on this one. I believe this one might have been started last time. Not 100% sure though. So I have, I had been a little bit in the middle and I worked my way up her skin to her face. So her face is right here. So next time I work on it, I will be able to put her face in, which is what I love to do at the beginning of Amira. So very pretty fabric, green, blue, purple. Thought that would look nice for a fairy. The next one is Daisy Girl, which is a Leisure Arts leaflet. And this one has been uh, restarted from, I started it in like high school or something and started it with the called for thread thickness and not called for fabric. And it didn't really mix very well. And so I have restarted it. Last year I showed my restart. So there will be additional progress on the restart this time. this this got called for uh, whip go earlier this year this is a mystery 32 count gray green even weave I believe it's the same it looks like it's a like a personal dyed fabric that I was given and it's the same fabric I'm stitching my temperature butterflies on although this is two over two and my butterflies are one over one let's get this next to some white can kind of see that it is gray green it's not white so yeah I like that much better uh, it's not bulky and crazy I had three strands last time on 32 count and it was hard and I believe I am also I also put this into um, something where I can mark it off and that's helping as well so next one is Edwardian Lady by Joan Elliott. And this one I don't think I've worked on since since my last whip parade. So I think it, maybe it's still still get to be called on on the whip go board. Yeah, I think this is where I was last time. This is on 32 count Fairy Mist Lugana by Fabric Flare. This is another uh, printed fabric. It's just white on one side. And splotchy pastels on this side. Super pretty. And this will be fun to get back to. Maybe I can get her hair and face in this coming stitchy session, whenever that gets called. I haven't checked. Um, Jessie Marie usually calls the whip go numbers around the 27th which would have been yesterday it was not on instagram so i need to go into facebook and try to find it see what my october has in store for me um then we have enchanted alphabet by lavender and lace i just recently worked on this i think in august maybe either july or august it was pretty recently and made the decision um to take the girl out. She's cute, but I don't think I like her enough to work on her. I keep avoiding her whenever I get this out. So I think I'm just gonna do all the letters, kind of squeeze it together a little bit and put the bunny in this hole instead of the girl. So that's kind of my thoughts on that one. This one is on 45 count Society Time Linen 1 over 2 full crosses. So it's very tiny. And I did the L and I think the J, is that a J? <laughs> it's very scrolly. The This last time I worked on it. So yeah, that's pretty. It's a nice gray, a green color. So I like that. Slow going. This one's very tiny because the fabric, the fabric is so small. 
but since there's no beads, I don't need it larger. So there are a couple of these that I chose to, to try, try it on the small fabric since I didn't need to worry about beads. Um, then we have Gr Garden Prelude by Mirabilia. And this is one, as you can see here, there's a thread sticking out. It calls for some water lilies in these flowers and I'm switching them out for my own choice of hand dyed cottons that I had in my stash that were similar to what was called for because their flowers, um, they're, they don't, I don't think they need to be a specific, uh, fancy silk because <laughs> they're, if, if they were in the dress and they needed to blend a certain way, I probably would have invested in the silks, but since they're just flowers, I'm like, eh, I don't need that. So this one, I do believe I worked on since since my whip parade, so that's fun. This will be an up and down one because it's pretty big. I finished the tops of the columns and I finished her, this is on 32 count Wedgwood Lagana by Color and Cotton. Um, it's cooler than it shows sometimes. Here's her, I finished her arms and a little bit more of her hair all of these pillars are done. There's some backstitch, I think, in here, but I figured I'd wait on the backstitch until I get more um, opportunity for backstitch farther down in the columns while the backstitch thread is on my needle. So that's coming along. I figured I'd work on her hair before I go down to her dress because her hair is higher up. She's got a lot of hair and the dress is really pretty. So I will be enjoying getting to that at some point. Okay, the next one is a new start since last time. And this one is a Dimensions Gold kit called uh, Gracious Era. So actually, Alan Malley's Gracious Era, but I'm just calling it Gracious Era. This is a, not a typical fancy lady, but since it's got all these ladies here, I figured it kind of goes in my fancy lady category. This That's why I like this piece is because of their dresses. So um, I started this with Terry Lee Crafts um for her birthday start i think in september last year so using all the all the kit stuff and this is on the kit ada which i believe is like a 14 count dusty blue oh 16 it's a 16 count ada and that was the start i got i started in the top no it could have been the center start and then i worked my way up to the top of the uh light pole there but it's got, you know, this is a this is a full cross black, but this part, the gray is a half stitch, which you can imagine like um, any dimensions kits, they have a variety of dimensions of, cause the light pole will be in the background. So it's a half stitch. So that'll be fun to do a little bit more. I do have this on my WIPCO board as well for this year, but it hasn't yet been called. So, It'll be fun to, to do this towards the end of the year sometime because it's got snow. So it would be nice to be, it's fine that it hasn't been called yet, I think so. After that is my Halloween Fairy, which is another one that was supposed to be worked on in September. But since I don't have time for it, I'm gonna move it to near Halloween at the end of October, which will be perfect. So this is by Nora Corbett as well. It's. I think it was originally published in a magazine, but it is currently found at hirschners.com as a PDF download. She has a few little fairies in there that were that were originally um, published in magazines. So this one is on Mushroom Slushy Lugana 32 count by Fabric Flare, another another printed one. This one does have a little bit more from last time because I believe I worked on it at Halloween time last year. So this will be fun to get back out next month or in about a month. <laughs> so that she's fun, she's cute. Another one that's, you know, fairly small so shouldn't take me the rest of my life to finish. But if I only work on it every Halloween, it'll be around for a little while. So next I have Lady of the Flag 
by Mirabilia. This is the original I got when right after it came out in 20, 2001. And I didn't start it until recently. Not recently. I guess it's, I mean, since Floss Tube, I think. Because I finally found this Stony Point Linen by Witchell, which I really enjoy. Or thought would look really good with her yellow dress. So let's see if this works, even though there's letters all over it. I don't have my normal, uh, what do you call it? Folder up here that I use for my background. So here she is. I did all of the blue this last time when it was called for Whip Go. So that's fun. And a little bit of the stripes of the flag. I'm not sure if I did any of the other st other bits, but you will see on the before and after. I have worked on this since last year though, so that's fun. There's even some beads in there on the on the blue in the stars, so. And I think she looks nice on this fabric, so I'm happy with that choice. She just needed the right fabric. Um, then Lady of the Mist, also by Mirabilia. This was when I started fairly recently also. I think I held a contest for which Mirabilia to start, and this one won. So I got a little start on it. I don't know if I've worked on this since my whip parade, but maybe. I don't know if I made it all the way across. I think I did work on this a little bit, but not a ton. So this is on 32 count light denim linen by Color and Cotton, two over two. And it's a very large design. So my margin is very small. This is probably like an inch and a quarter. But um, Color and Cotton's fat quarters, I think are a little skinnier than some brands. So if you got a, a fat quarter from like Zweiger directly or something, you might have a little bit more margin on the side. Otherwise, you might need to go up to a fat half, which a lot of people do on with this um, pattern. And if you choose 28 count, you're definitely gonna need to go up to a fat half. This is 32, so. Um, then we have my letter F fairy, which was a new start since I finished the letter L fairy. And you just saw this too, because I worked on it at the very beginning of September. And this is on the called for water lily linen, two over two full cross. And I have pretty much all the stitching from like here up is done, but there's a lot of beads. There's a, there'll be a lot of beads in, in these leaves and in her headdress. And like, I think there's a little scattering there's some around her wings. So I have a lot of beads that I could do at the top. I just haven't yet. And then the whole F is left to stitch as well with more beads. <laughs> lots of beads, lots of bling. And both of these fairies I had, I did some color conversions on to fit my niece's tastes. Um, and then I have Made a Merriment which is a Joan Elliott. It was found in Cross Stitch Gold, um, July 2010. I picked this up at the Southern California Cross Stitching Retreat that I went to a, a, few, a little bit, a few years ago. They just had their recent retreat. It looked like a nice time. So this one, um, I thought this would be fun to try playing with fancy threads for their dresses instead of the DMC shading. So I think it's turning out all right. It's definitely a different look than hers, but it's still pretty. So I picked a different fancy thread for her dress and her hair, her dress, her hair, you know, all of that. And then where this color appears here, it'll also be that same color up here. So I basically just swapped out everything, did a color conversion with fancy threads from my stash. And this is on Spring Morning Jobelin by Color and Cotton, 32 count. 
uh, two over two. And I did work on this as well, I think around the spring break time, which was nice. Lots of spring colors. This is a good, to, good to be worked on in the spring. And I worked on her a lot, which is, which is fun. Got her bodice mostly done. This I believe is the face of another girl that started that I had more of that particular skin color on my needle and added, added that into. And maybe some more um, ribbon as well. So yeah, that's coming along slowly but surely. Next I have Nantucket Rose by Lavender and Lace. And this one I'm making Anne of Avonlea or Anne of Green Gables. And so I changed her hair to be red and I'm converting the colors of the house to be um, Green Gables-esque colors, which I had done and then ripped out and then now I've redone. So I, I think, I don't know if the house is done yet, but it's there's been progress. No, it's not done. But I got, got some progress on it. So here is this now. This is on 32 count silver linen by MCG Textiles. So slow going on this one because of the color conversion with the house. But um, once that's done, I think it'll, it'll go better. So yeah. I think originally I had the, a greenhouse with white trim, but then I realized the actual house and the story has, is white with green trim. So I had to swap it to make it accurate. <laughs> but I love her as a redhead way better than as a blonde like it's charted. So Okay. Then I have Roses of Provence, or Provence, I don't know, um, by Mirabilia. And I, I don't know how much I've worked on this, if it has come out or not. I guess you'll see. <laughs> it might have. Yeah, I think it has. So this is on 32 count Stonehenge by Color and Cotton, which is a nice mottled green with little hints of purple. I really like that. And I thought it would be perfect for a, a rose garden. Two over two, full cross. Finished her face, started in on her hair, worked over a little bit into her hand. So I think I have done a little bit since last time. Maybe not, you'll find out, but I think, I don't think I had that much done last time. So that's exciting. Progress. Okay, then we have Stargazer, which is a crowd favorite <laughs> by Mirabilia. This is one I've done a color conversion and um, dyed my own fabric, which is a, a one-off. The only time I've ever dyed my fabric turned out amazing. But still, I'm not, I'm not like a messy crafter kind of person. So painting and, and dyeing and I don't know. I, I'd rather not <laughs> get messy and then have to clean it all up. So it's not something I'll do all the time, that's for sure. But it turned out for this. And my vision has been realized. So this is Stargazer, which is 32 count, originally white MCG textiles linen. And I dyed it double dye with denim writ. And all the beads are done on the top. And I believe I worked in more in her skirt um, the last time I worked on this. I did get all of this and some more ribbons and maybe even some more of the red so she's so pretty and I've changed her hair color to be more like mine and these colors I felt were more me and they popped a little more off the fabric so because if I, she had like a charcoal um, jacket before which I felt like would blend in against this navy fabric but I wanted the navy fabric to be like a night sky so this is what I came up with the, the beads are all called for beads up there on the top, but I will have some bead conversions in her 
um, in her clothes, like these beads in her neck are like the same, you know, burgundy color as her jacket. So, because what was called for wouldn't have worked for that. So, <clears throat> and then we have Summer Queen by Mirabilia. I believe this was a fairly recent lip go call too. So I have worked on this since last night a little bit. Probably not a ton. I feel like some of my uh, fancy ladies make short progress. But yeah, I think I did a little bit. <clears throat> this is on 32 Count Oyster Linen by MCG, Te MCG Textiles. <clears throat> and I finished her face, it looks like. Because I remember last time her face wasn't done, I think. In my whip parade from before. So next time I can work on her hair which will be fun. So if for some reason I'm wrong, you guys can all be laughing at me behind the scenes, but when you see the before and after pictures <laughs> or my little comments that say no progress, I, I am remembering that incorrectly. <clears throat> but really there's a lot of projects here and can't be expected to remember them all, right? Um, let's see, Villa Mirabilia <clears throat> is my largest Mirabilia. Possibly one of the oldest. I started her a long time ago. Um, still not done. I believe I did work on her on the pot a little bit, but it's still not. The pot area is still not 100% finished. This is on probably the called for like Willow Green Belfast 32 count. And it is on a fat half because it does need it. So. Here is this all the way back and did a lot more green up there. I haven't added any more to her dress as far as I know, but there's still um, like the actual pot colors still left to stitch, but I think all this green is done. So that's exciting. But there's pot, not all the pot. A lot of the pot is um, blank space. You'll see the fabric showing through, but the, there's some shadowy bits that need to be stitched and then <clears throat> there are some beads that are draped around here as well. So I'll be able to do that eventually. <clears throat> but yeah, this, this is a big piece of fabric. It rivals a lot of my full coverage pieces. <laughs> She's a big in, but lots of pretty colors, that's for sure. Not a lot of beads though. So if you like the thought of just mostly stitching, she's a good one. Although I think she's out of print, so hard to find. <clears throat> and then we have Winter Queen by Mirabilia. And I have Summer Queen, Autumn Queen, and Royal Holiday finished, and they take turns on my wall for the season. And I just realized this morning, I was like, oh, I could probably switch out. I have Su Spring Queen up there right now, and I can switch her out to Autumn Queen <clears throat> now that fall is officially here. So, But I still have Summer and Winter left to stitch. Here is winter. I think I did a little bit on her since last time. This is 32 count white MCG textiles linen. And I did her like shoulder bits and some of the fur maybe in her dress when I worked on this last. So a little, little bit of progress. And all, all four of my s s proper seasonal queens are on this white, um, MCG textiles linen because the original you know the originals are called called for white and when I started these my the easiest fabric to get was craft store fabric so that's what I did and they all look beautiful <laughs> so you don't have to get super fancy fabric to stitch pretty things um you can if you want to but it's not required and then my royal holiday is on something brown because that was what was called for um but all the all the official four seasons are all on that white fabric. Um, the summer one is on oyster, which is sort of white. I think I probably thought it was white. And when I later, when I realized it was technically oyster, I was like, oh, well, it's close. <laughs> so I just kept it and used it and um, it's all good. So my last fancy lady is Winter Rose by Lavender and Lace. And this is another one I'm doing on a small count fabric because it, there's no beads. 
This is on 46 count. Misty Rain, one over two. Full cross, and I do have a little bit of progress on this one. I finished those top um, decorations completely and got started on her head. So yay, very sweet. That's a cute one. All right, so that was 22 in my fancy lady category. And I think I have, because a whip go board has 24 spots plus a free space. So there's a couple others that I think are in the other category that are on my whip go board, but they're, they, they are more other than fancy lady. They're, I mean, gracious era is a little bit, um, could be other also, but I left it in for some reason. So they will come in later, but they might, if they haven't worked on them yet, I don't think I have either one of those. I'll, I will get to them later this year, but I'm going to reset, put all these away and bring out another category. I haven't decided yet and come film that. And then we'll see from there. I'll do full coverage tomorrow. Full coverage is my largest group with 31 current projects. So that's going to be a day in and of itself, I think. <laughs> So I'll be back and see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. It's still Wednesday, September 28th, and I'm here with my other category. So this is things that are not full coverage, not samplers. Um, there's about, there's uh, 19 things in this category. So the first section, or the first whip is a, um, is the Advent Animals by Bright Books Books. So it's got a 25 parts. So it's a long, complicated thing to show. But show it, I will. <laughs> so I have, there was only one finished last year. And that was Katie Kitty. But some of the rest of these should have before and after pictures. So this was, the all of these are on 18 count. Um, light blue Ada, two over one. Here's Peter Polar Bear, which is finished now. And this isn't included in my finished section because all of the Advent animals are not finished. So it's still a whip in my opinion, in my category. Here is Mary Mouse. She's super cute. I worked on these at the end of last year, but I haven't worked on them yet at all this year. Okay. Sorry, she's knocking the tripod. And then number 18, which I think was Remy Rabbit. He's finished too. And then all the rest of these, I'll just show where they are now, which I think is the original start on all of them, except for Oda Owl, who had a little bit of extra time that same year. A couple years ago, I started all of these, one through 30, one through 25 in, in July, for Jol like Christmas in July, and did one color completion, which was, I usually chose as a medium to small color. So something that was identifiable to that character, but not, a lot of stitching because I had other th other things I was working on too. So here's number four, Duncan Dog. And Hattie Hedgehog. Cashmere Camel. These are free patterns on Brooks Books website. I believe they're still up there. Pierre Penguin. So these, there's no change on most of these, I think, but they are uh, placeholders for next year. Pearly Pig. Hopefully I'll be able to do a little bit more on these in the Christmas season, because that's, that's my favorite time to work on them. Kenny Kangaroo. Sheila Sheep, you're sitting right where my projects are going to go in a little bit, Kitty. 
Fitzwilliam Frog. Sophie Squirrel. Colin Cardinal. Cassie Cow. Rascal Raccoon. Gigi Giraffe. Giraffe. <laughs> Got all the Christmas lights around her. Hamilton Horse. Larry Lion. And my goal for these when they're all done is to put them, I have a frame, it's like a flip frame that I'm gonna put them in. So here's Odette Owl. She's got a little more done on her, but it was all done that first year. So no progress. So I can flip them out every day. Like it'll, they'll, they'll be on a big ring and I'll just flip them over um, every day. I'll like mount them on cardstock or something. Ethan Elephant. Ping Panda. Alistair Alligator. Deborah Donkey. And Rudolph Reindeer. So that's all of those. No progress on most of those, but I had three finishes last year because I made it my made them my travel stitching towards the end of the year. So I'm hoping I can find some time this year to work on them a little bit more as well, because those are cute. And they do go pretty quick once you just spend time on them. So. Huh, you're in the wing now, kitty. Smokey's down here, which is where I've been putting all my extra projects when they're done. It's being so helpful. <laughs> what you gonna do? All right, here you go. Yeah, I'll just have to put them somewhere else, huh? All right, the next one is Antique Shoe Collection. This is a Bucilla kit. I'm calling this my oldest whip at this point because this is um, one of the ones I started in high school. I have to have a, a few that are that old that I don't know when the first one was, but I'm using all the called for things. And I did work on this a little bit. I had this in my Fancy Lady Whipco board because it was Fancy Lady adjacent. So I did work on this when it was called for that for three days. And this is on the kit Ada 14 count, probably antique white. And I believe I worked on the shoe that green shoe there. Two strands, full crosses, a single strand backstitch. Very colorful, but it doesn't come out that often. Then Blackwork Flower with butterflies, or and, and butterflies. I guess is what it's technically called. This is by Leslie Tear. I did a PDF download of this. Oh good, she moved. <laughs> I guess she felt threatened by all my things piling up there. I did a fancy floss conversion with Victorian Motto and then just DMC Black with this one. Where is it? There it is. Kind of got hidden on the bottom. This is some 28 count I think even weave by MC by Zweigart that you can get at Hobby Lobby in light blue. So I did work on this a little bit um, recently. I don't remember why, but I 
believe I worked on this petal and there may be some other stuff that got worked on since my whip parade. I know I worked on this butterfly area um, the time before that, I think. So that might be new too from last year. I'm not sure. This is a pretty one and it's got some, some sparkly crinic in swirls and a little bit of the back stitching on the butterfly is that sparkly too. So that's fun. Then we have Chaplin's Garden, which is another very old one. I think this is maybe college age. My mom got this for me because it had lots of colors, but it's kind of got too many colors. Is that possible? Um, I eventually started highlighting the chart and that helped a lot because the confetti in this one was intense. So, but I don't know that I've worked on it at all since my last whip parade. So there's that. Some of these that are other, they didn't get on my whip go board. So they didn't, and they're not really a focus. So they just aren't getting worked on. So that's kind of the way it goes. And I, yeah, I don't think I did this, did any of this. This is on the called for, you know, kit Ada, 14 count light blue Ada, two strands, full crosses. And yeah, I don't think I worked on anything new since the whip parade update that from what I remember, I watched it yesterday. So that's okay. <laughs> Something's got to give, really. I mean, I'm hoping this coming year I'll have some plans that will incorporate everything to get touched at least once. Um, but this year that didn't really happen. So let's see, Colors of the Seasons 2. This one I had high hopes of finishing this year, but I kind of got waylaid. I finished Autumn, had so much fun with it, and I don't remember, this is probably post Whip Parade, so I think it's been a start since last time, maybe. But I think winter kind of um, slowed me down because there was a, a little bit more stitching in it and I had other things I was working on. These two don't seem quite as um, stitch heavy, but I kind of got off track and have been working on other things. So I'll get back to this. I still really like it. It just ended up not being as much of a focus this year as I had thought it would be, but it is very pretty. So I'm doing them in a, a square situation instead of um, up and down. So I have a lot of fabric up here. And so I started with autumn and then I moved to winter. I don't know why, I think I have it backwards, but whatever. <laughs> it, it won't be clockwise, I guess, but oh well. So this is what I've got. This is 27 count Linda in vintage country mocha, two over two full cross. And I just, Oh, you know what? I never even finished winter. What do you know? That's terrible. I think I had some frogging I needed to do down at the bottom area too. So that probably messed me up, but ah, such is life. But autumn turned out amazing. And I love the shading, like even on her green jacket and everything. It's all very cute. So I will be getting back to this eventually. <laughs> Doing these whip parades is nice because then it reminds me of some of the things that I have and I love. So that's always a good thing. Dragon Ride. It's been a little while since I worked on this one because I've just been distracted by other things. But this one I am stitching for my son, my middle son who loves dragons. And this is by Teresa Wensler. You can no longer find these patterns. I think they, it might be in one of the magazines that's a really old magazine. So if you can find that, you might be able to find it. I got mine on Patterns Online, which is where you can find a lot of her designs now, but for some reason she's taken down her dragon patterns at this point. So I have probably worked on this some since my whip parade. Um, I haven't worked on it recently, but I have worked on it sometimes in this past year. So this is 28 count light blue even weave by MCG Textiles. Mostly two over two, and the man in the middle is one over one. <clears throat> but it, there's a lot of blends in here and fractionals, so um, two over two is necessary. Yeah, so there's that. I know a lot of you, or I have a few of you who are big fans of this one, and I know it hasn't been loved that much lately, but I'll get back to it. It's always enjoyable when I get to it. And let's see, Fairy Tale Town is a new one I started. 
and I guess I should change that. It's not, yeah, it is Fairy Tale Town. This is a kit by Avarice Art that is very large. And I am stitching mine on one over one on 28 count. So I'm start, I started over here and there's very little finished. I just have a one day start on it. But I'm planning, there are some single strand half stitches and single strand back stitching when it's mostly charted for two strands. So since I am stitching it one over one, um, I've just, I've chosen some Guterman sewing silk for those details that are, that are meant to be more dainty. So here's my start. This is ice blue, uh, 28 count even weave. And there's my start, which is just a one day thing. Started this with Julie from Stitching at the Cabin. And she's gotten more done on hers already because she has kept work has kept working on it every little bit. So she's doing really good. I think she started at the same end, but she started down in the 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 path, the walkway, and she's working up. So she's got a good a good chunk started already. Um then I have the first of my floral crosses. This is fall floral cross. These are by the Cooler Design Studio and you can find these on their website as well as Everything Cross Stitch. This is the only one I have from Everything Cross Stitch. The other ones were given to me back when they were made as um, kits by Jan Lynn, I think. Um, but those kits are hard to find now because they're out of print. But you can still find PDF or print copies of the patterns online, so that's nice. They're all on a different 14 count Ada. This is oatmeal Ada. Here's where I'm at. I believe I had most of these started last year. So there should be some updates on all of these because they were all, if you remember, if you watch me normally, they were all called in August for arbitrary August. I did not get to everything on my wheel, but the wheel seemed to think I needed to get all four of these worked on. So that was kind of fun <laughs> that I do have a little bit of progress on all of them. The next one is Fantasy Triptych. Oh, Smokey, so cute. Yeah, there she is. You're all stretched and silly. Yep. Fantasy Triptych is a unique one. This is also by Teresa Winsler. It's enormous. This was started by my sister-in-law. She did a, a good chunk of the castle and then when I picked it up, I worked on some of the trees and got a little bogged down in the confetti that is typical Teresa Wensler confetti. So then I worked on some of the border and started in on this maiden on her horse. So I don't think I have worked on this yet this year. Um, but this is on my Fancy Lady whip go board as well because it's got a Fancy Lady in it. So I don't think you're gonna have a before picture this is on 25 count even weave, mostly two over two, but their faces are charted one over one. And I haven't yet backstitched her face because it calls for piercing the even weave, which is ridiculous. So I'm going to need a sewing needle and stuff for that to get really sharp. And I just haven't. So eventually I can do that. But so yeah, my sister-in-law stitched most, like pretty much all the castle that you see is her stitching. And then I did a good chunk of the trees and the border and the lady, what you see there. And then this little bit of the horse of the, the knight was also me because that was um, like leftover threads from when I was working on the, the lady. So anyways, this one will come out again at the end of the year sometime, maybe even in October. I don't know which Whipco numbers got drawn, but it is on my Whipco board. So this will get some attention three days this year. So we'll see what I can add to that. Maybe give me a comment for that one. What section would you like me to work on when I pick it up next? Do you want me to work on the lady some more? More like finish off the top of the castle? I noticed the top of the castle wasn't finished. What should I do? More more border? Let's see. Um, flower within a flower. This is one that I got as a a freebie giveaway thing somebody was giving away 
and it looked pretty, has lots of different colors. I think it has a few specialty stitches, but not too many. And I, I think I was participating in a bingo board situation for the magazine monthly challenge. And one of the squares required you to start something from a magazine. And I don't tend to do that. I have one thing started from a magazine and it's already started. So I was like, mm, what can I do? So I had this in my stash and I thought, oh, sure, I'll start it. So this is, I believe, um, 32 count, what do you call it? Lamb's wool, linen. And there's my start. So I did, I believe I color completed, starting in the center. I put, I, I stitched a little arrow so I'd know which way was up. Here's a close-up of the center. It's gonna be kind of intense. Um, but I color completed whichever colors I came to. And so now I have some placement with which to work on the rest of it. So I'm not sure when this will come out again, but it's cute, it's fairly small. And it's one of those things that if I really wanted to finish, I could just pull this out and see if I could try to get a finish. <clears throat> Um, the next one is my Mill Hill Honey Bee. This is the third Buttons and Beads kit that I have started. And I had high hopes of working on this throughout the summer, but I just got bogged down with Knitting Woman and other things. I forget why. I didn't have, I, felt, I didn't feel like I had time on Mondays to pull out my Mill Hill Monday, but some, one of these days I'll get back to this. So I just have a little bit of a start on this one. Called for 14 count perforated paper, two stranded full cross, and then I'm attaching the beads as called for. So they call for a full cross um, attachment for petite beads and then a half cross attachment for large beads so that they sit on an angle. And I have most of this black section finished except for a few beads down here. So there is actually, those, it's all beaded, which is really fun. You can see the shiny. So that's nice. I will get back to this eventually. Um, Purple Pansy is another one that if I just wanted a finish, I could probably pull this out and grab it, grab it, grab it for a finish. So this is by Carolyn Manning Designs, and I know a lot of people are working on her like patchwork series, and which is full crosses and full coverage, but it's little blocks and triangles looking like patchworks. They're very pretty, but they never really called to me necessarily. And I went and looked at her stuff and I thought, I saw this one. It's kind of, it's not really black work. She calls it a thread sketch collection because it's basically outlining stitches that are colored as well. But black work, in my opinion, is where you have like the flower, where you have a, a chunk and then it's filled in with a pattern. That's black work, um, as far as I know. This is just back stitching in shapes because you can see the petals and the leaves and flowers and things like that. So I thought this looked pretty and I started it on the same 18 count Ada that I'm doing my advent animals on and I have the center section finished. I don't think I have any more done on this since my whip parade last year, but if I do, you'll see it. And I am using Silkies for the most part. I wanted to try them too. That's another reason I started this is I wanted to try Sulky Petites, which I'm using one strand for these colorful bits. And the green is actually a single strand of regular cotton floss, which is mistletoe by Coloring Cotton. So the twofold reason for that, the little pack I got didn't have a green, and the other reason is there's a lot more detail to this, to the back stitching in the green, so I figured having a slightly thinner strand for that would be good anyways. So the petals are done with sulky, one strand, and then the green is done with one strand of color and cotton. So even though it's called purple pansy, I'm not actually using any purple. <laughs> I'm just using this 
pack I got that had all these variegated. This one looks greenish, but when you look at it, it's actually a variegated primary um, colors, red, green, yellow, and blue. Green's not primary, but you know what I mean. So it, it wouldn't really work that well for leaves. So I didn't use it. Okay. And then Rosetto. This is my counted canvas piece, which I love and I need to get back to it. This is by Needle Delights Originals. And I'm using all the called for things because it's all fancy new different stuff that um, is unlike what you would normally use for cross counted cross stitching. This is on 18 count mono canvas. Oh, I do have some. I wasn't sure if I, I thought maybe I had finished a little bit more and I had. So this is this one. You can see the, some of it is sparkly or shiny. And I have done two more sets of blocks since last whip parade. And this is really fun. Last time I think I just had the big plus sign. And now I have, they have them in pairs. So as you can see, this one's by itself, but then these are matching, these are matching, these are matching, these are matching, then these and these. So next I'll do whichever these ones are and then these ones. So, and then I'll move on to like the strippy, stripped ones and then the little ones. So very cute. And these are, these are stretcher bars, which is typical for um, counted canvas. I normally stitch in hand, but this is very, very nice for counted canvas because stitches are very long sometimes and very warpy potentially, but since it's all um, held in place, it works really nice for all these crazy stitches. So very fun to work on that. I do hope to pull that out again at some point. I have a second counted canvas piece that is owned with most of the, like half of the fancy floss. The flosses are very expensive, so I kitted up what I could on one, two, three stitch. And then there's the needlepoint exclusive types threads I'll get from my local needlepoint store, um, which I haven't done yet because I've never quite gotten to the point where I'm close enough to start it. I'm tempted to finish this one first and only have one counted canvas piece on the go at a time. I think that's probably a safe choice. So I've kind of held off on buying the rest of those and I've bought other stuff with that, with my fun money. <laughs> um, but eventually I'll finish this one, finish kidding up my, my second one and work on that one. Um, let's see, Spring Floral Cross is, see it's uh, by Jan Lin. These are the original kits, but even then, you know, they're still a cooler design studio, but I'm doing all the kit, in, kit uh, materials with all the rest of these floral crosses. This one is blue, 14 count Ada. Here's where this one's at. And again, I should have before and afters for all of these crosses because I worked on them here last month. So they all have a little bit of new, new content. Just one day though, I think on all of them. So, but they might've had more at another time since my last whip parade. I don't know. I don't keep track that much. Spling, spring, spring roundels. I did work on this one a little bit recently too. I think this was an arbitrary August pick. I was working on this one. This, these were from, by Barbara Jackson. It was, it's like a class piece um, and it came with all the materials. These are, this is not, not cross stitching. All of these stitches are, there's a mosaic stitch a 10 stitch, a Smyrna stitch, eyelets. They look like cross stitches, but they are not. But potentially, if you found this pattern, um, you could probably stitch it in cross stitches and it would work just fine. So I believe I only got one day on this, not a lot, just a little bit of the pink there in one of the flowers. I wish I had had gotten more, I think, but it was busy season, I think. So eventually I will get going on those. These are some other ones that if I had wanted some finishes, I could maybe pull this out and get some finishes. So at least on the first one, probably wouldn't take me too long to finish that one. And then I've got the materials for these other two as well. Um, the 
Summer Floral Cross is next. This one is done on white. All the kit floss, all the kit fabric. Ah, this is the one. I had it in needle minder that fell off in transit and I didn't know which one. So I found it. Yay! <laughs> so here's this one. This one doesn't look like it has too much going on. But I do remember I got, this is summer. It looks very Christmassy right now, but these were some strawberries. I think I did some sticks. This one seems to be have the least amount of all of them. But I got something started and no back stitching. So the strawberries will uh, pop later once I get more back stitching on them. And then I have Time for Myself, which is by Soda Stitch. This is also on my Fancy Lady Whip Go board because it's she's a pretty lady. Um, so she should come out again this year, but I haven't worked on her again or since I started her, which I think was around, I think it was for Colette, the Highway Stitcher's birthday month. She started like four, four or five things in her in October last year so this was one of them and I had it I'm like I'll start that with you so I did this is on 32 count whisper linen by uh, Zweigert and this is my start two over two full cross because she has some back stitching in her so I figured it, the ratio would look nicer if I just did it two over two rather than try to do a tiny one over one. So she's she's really pretty. So this Whisper is like a gray beige kind of color. Um, and the my teacup finish that I showed at the beginning of the video is blue Whisper. So if you see those two, those colors, they're both by Zweigart. This one is a solid color. That's kind of a printed cloud looking one. So one is Whisper and one is blue Whisper. So. If you're looking for the cloud one and you just pick Whisper, you're going to get something that looks like this. So heads up there. And then under the C Club, which is by the Frosted Pumpkin. This is a year long stitch along. So it's, an, it's a mystery. It's not completely out yet. But a, um, it says under the C down here. I have toner save mode, so it's, it'll be brighter in person. But we have the top half of the border. And, you know, it started in the middle with this character and dolphins and then went down here and worked our way up and around. So I have this much mostly finished and then still have a lot left to do to get caught up. But I am hoping if I can get my whip go goals done this week, I can get back to this 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 weekend. That would be really nice because it's so cute. This is on 25 count mystery even weave. One over one, full crosses. And I'm actually doing a color conversion almost exclusively on this one because I figured, why not? It is charted for mostly DMC. It has like three um, hand-dyed cottons that it is called for. But I am using Fancy Floss for my stash. So the colors are slightly different than what's called for, but close. And then like this wave, the wave color, Deep Blue Sea, is the only one that's called for because I actually had that one. <laughs> and everything else, I didn't. But that's really fun. So here's my thread choices. And yeah, I hope to do some more on that this week. And get caught up. So hopefully I can have an early next year finish on that one, just like I did Cozy Cafe Club this year. My last one in this other category is the Winter Floral Cross. And this is on green, 14 count Ada. And here's this one. And I did, I remember doing holly leaves and, and berries this past time, so that's fun. Makes it look very Christmassy. And all of these have this, these backstitched letters in the background, which I think are really fun. So I've got a, a little bit of that going on in all of them started. I am trying, like I do with a lot of my pieces, working from the top down, so I'll do 
last year I felt like working on the backstitch letters. This year I felt like just cross-stitching the main subjects. So just whatever I'm feeling like is what I'll work on. I'm not sure I'll have time for my next section of sampler stuff, but we'll see. I might try to film that today too and then do full coverage and full coverage no background categories tomorrow. So stay tuned whether or not I will do this today. <laughs> I brought it all up already so it's here. I just need to kind of reset within the same room so I think I might be able to do it. We'll see. All right, samplers. So I don't have that much time. I might need to pause in the middle of this section to go eat lunch. Um, but we'll get going, we'll get started on it. So I have 16 in this category. The first one is Cross Stitch Fun by Kesslins. This is my first and only monochromatic piece and I'm really enjoying it, it's fun. I'm working with Coastal Seaweed by Victorian Motto and Star Sapphire Linen or Star Sapphire Jobelin by Wichelt. So it's a solid color fabric and a uh, slightly modeled thread, but it's not so modeled that I need to worry about, um, you know, matching where I just left off and I can just stitch and enjoy. So this is a nice, pretty light green and it's very soothing. So I do enjoy that one. I'm over the halfway mark on the top. So it's going to go to about here, I guess. About there. And then I can start working down and work on all the cute little motifs. They're so much fun. Yeah, I'm still in here. All right, English Garden Sampler is by Teresa Winsler. This is my third Teresa Winsler I have on the go. I am actually not doing this scene. It's too much confetti. I've got enough of that in my uh, fantasy triptych, but I really like this part. So I'm gonna somehow bring the border down and just kind of have it around here. So far, I'm just in the border, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, too many things. And I don't think I've worked on this at all since last time, sadly. But it's possible. I don't, maybe I did. I don't remember if I had some of this stuff over here before, so it's possible I have done a little bit. It's 28 count um, ivory jobelin, I think. Mostly two over two on the, you know, regular cross stitches. But there is some one over one in the, I think the alphabet is one over one and the gate is one over one. So there's a little bit of that needed. And of course, blends and fractionals. So even weave is highly recommended for Therese Winsers. 25 or 28 count because of the one over ones. Yeah, you're okay. And then I have Flea Market Flowers, which I, which is one I started with the Fat Quarter Shop. And I think I worked, I, I have this in my whip parade from last year, I think. So I had every intention on keeping up with this and it just didn't happen. And I brought it along to England because I thought it'd be a perfect travel piece as well. And it would, but I didn't finish my main piece. And so this never got pulled out, but it would be a good, a good travel piece um, when I need another travel piece. So I don't know when that will be. And I don't know if I have any, I don't know that I have any more since last time, but here's where it is now. This is on 25 count barley vintage cloth by Fat Quarter Shop, and it's um, one over one. Full cross, called for DMCs. Very cute, very pretty. I, it's so colorful, I really enjoy it. I just have a million other things to do. <laughs> and when I got behind the actual stitch along, um, I just never got back to it. Which is why I like to keep up on those most of the time, because otherwise I know it'll fall by the way. All right, Heirloom's uh, Nativity Sampler by the Victoria Sampler is the next one in the sampler category. And I believe I do have some more of this one finished. I think I finished off this uh, wise man scene last Christmas. So that's exciting. Yep, she's gonna still cry. 
Well, maybe after, um, after lunch, she'll be distracted enough to go do something else and I can finish filming in peace. <laughs> yeah. So here's this one now. This is on 32 count silver linen by MCG Textiles. And I have, it's all completed top to bottom, all the specialty stitches and the beads. And this scene was not done last time. And then I did the white work under there and the words and those bands of specialty stitches and vines. And then I believe my goal was to do this last bit for Christmas this year. That'd be nice. Guess we'll see what my uh, stitching life looks like at Christmas time. This one is really pretty to work on. So it is enjoyable no matter how much time I get on it. Ah, my needle is crooked. So it's poking through. There we go. But these are cute. I love how Victoria Sampler gets um, so much detail in such a small space with so few stitches. Um, they are very talented over there. And I also have started the Heirloom Stitching Sampler, but I've done barely anything on this. It's one of those that I could pull out on the <clears throat> International Cross Stitch Day, along with the stitching shelf that I have. It's a full coverage piece, or even time for myself. There's like so many that are stitching themed. I just have other things I'm doing on that day usually. It's a day in August, but anyways. I have some of the top done and then that's it. <clears throat> I haven't worked on this really since I started it, so that's kind of sad, but it's still pretty. This is on really bright purple fabric and that's my start. And the letters are all the same thread. It's just a, um, maybe if I hold it like that, or maybe if I put it with some white, it will keep the purple. It, uh, it's uh, Victorian Greys, I think, by Victorian Motto, and it's uh, highly variegated, gray-purple, which is really fun. And then this, this vine is one over one, so there's some companion vines on the sides of the letters that will also be one over one. So this is 32 count, or what is this? 28 count purple even weave and I think it was just gifted to me so I don't know what the purple is but it's um it was a long strip like a random cut and so I thought it was perfect for a band sampler but yeah it's 28 count which makes sense since it's got the one over one available or sections in there um high hopes I had high hopes of working on this um, along with Julicious's birthday in June, maybe? But I didn't get to it. I had, I think I was working on Amazing Grace, trying to get that finished, and it just didn't happen. This is such a cute pattern, though. A little kitty looking out in the garden. And I don't think I've worked on it since last year. Since my, since my whip parade, but I do hope to get back to this again, eventually. It's very cute. There's again, um, some, some one over one, some specialty stitches, but mostly cross stitching. Two over two on 32 count olive green linen. Yeah. Let's see the nice, nice green. Now we have one that I've actually made some progress on. His name is Jesus. I work on this, this one with Desiree, the Addicted Stitcher, roughly once every two weeks. <clears throat> this is by Joyful Expressions uh, Needlework, and it's charted for three different shades of the same color, and I have done mine in three different colors, all Victoria Motto sampler shop threads. And I love how it's turning out. This is one over one full cross on 28 count ivory Lugana. And last time I just had some of the little bits on the top done. And now I have the whole center thing done and all the side phrases. And so coming up this, the rest of this year and into next year, I'll, we'll work on those bottom phrases. 
and then we'll be done. That'll be fun. So this one is likely uh, to be a finish next year in 2023 at the pace we're going. It's fun working with somebody on things because then you know it's going to get some progress. <laughs> um, and let's see, in the beginning is a kit I started in college. And this is, um, I don't know what kind of kit, what the original name was or anything. So I'm stitching it on my own fabric, my own threads. It's very sweet though, lots of animals. And I did work on this a little bit in Arbitrary August. So there'll be a tiny bit of progress. I think it only got one day though. This is an 18 count antique white Ada. And I believe I just worked on the moon scene up at the top with some stars and got that filled in and maybe a little bit down here that got filled in with the, the extra blue on my needle <laughs> so that's cute i do i do like enjoying i do enjoy working on this when i pull it out but it just doesn't come out that often one of my oldest projects found one of my new needle minders a little elephant I thought was appropriate for all the animals on here. Let's see. My Story by Jeanette Douglas. This is a fun one that's just chock full of specialty stitches. And I've chosen all my own colors that are close to what's called for. And I don't know that I've worked on this any... Oh, I have. Okay. Based on what I saw yesterday in the... When I rewashed my... Whip parade from last year. I have done a little bit on this one. That's exciting. This is on uh, ivory, I mean, lamb's wool linen, 32 count. And I have almost the whole first band done. But I believe I was only through the waves uh, last year. So that's exciting. Got a little bit more done on that. There's even some beads in here. So yeah something <laughs> i have some progress Woohoo! on one of these random ones it's not really a um a focus this year um i don't think i had anything around that one so let's see sampler of stitches comes next this is one i've been i was hoping to work on this one throughout the year and get it done by the end of the year this is by the drawn thread Every letter is accompanied by several specialty stitches that go with, that start with the letter. The name of the stitch starts with that letter. And I'm quite a bit behind where I need to be to keep pace to finish by the end of the year. I just have other, have had other things that have taken its place. But I do hope to keep working on this on Sundays. Although now that I have, I have it slotted for all the Sundays in October, but since I'm behind on Knitting Woman, and Knitting Woman is a gift. I don't know. I do, we'll see. I think I do still want to keep working on this on Sundays because I don't want it to, I, I do want to finish it. Um, so I don't want it to take too long. Let's see. And go too far into next year. If I could finish it sooner than later, that'd be great. So this is where I've gotten to so far. And this was a new start for 2022. So no before picture. This is on the called for 30 count uh, custard cream linen with all the called for MPI silks. This was a gift to me, all the all the parts to it. So that was a, a tremendous uh, gift and I've been enjoying it. So all the different specialty stitches. So yeah, I should be a lot farther than I am, but what you gonna do? <laughs> All right, I have a few more to do here in this category, but I hear my husband getting going on lunch down there. So I'm gonna go have lunch with him and then I'll probably come back up here. I think it's too hot to walk today. Um, so I'll come back up and film after I've eaten. So I will be right back. All right, next up in the sampler category is Tapestry. This is by Ink Circles. And a lot of these in the other and sampler categories I've chosen because I want to try a particular designer that I've seen around. So this is the one I chose that I like best from Ink Circles. And I'm doing this with a conversion of my own from Victorian Motto. 
they are the mostly from the Eliza Bell Cox sampler pack that she put together a few years ago. There's a couple substitutions, but none of them are the called for general arts. <laughs> and this is where I'm at with this one. This is on 28 count Ivory Jobelin one over one full cross. And this past, I think arbitrary August, I worked my way over to the corner. So that's fun. Got a little bit of progress on that one. Arbitrary, Arbitrary August is a fun event to participate in to make sure I see some of these that are not as high a priority, but they're still fun to work on. So that, that's always nice. Um, those who sing, it's another one by The Drawn Thread. I started this for Colette, the, the Highway Stitcher's birthday um, a few years ago, and she's done with it. <laughs> I am not. But this is another one that I did um, my own colors. I think I think they're all unique, but just similar to what's called for. This is on a scrap of mushroom slushy, thirty-two count. That's left over from my Halloween fairy, and this is by Fabric Flare. And this is uh, two over two full crosses. There's a few specialty stitches as well. The flowers are specialty stitches, which is fun. But I've gotten some of the like more leaves and flowers and started on the bird. I think this came out in arbitrary August too. But I believe I do have some progress. I think I might have worked on this again in October um, for her birthday last year and things like that. So it has seen some progress since I started it or since last whip parade. Then we have To Everything a Season Sampler, which is a needles and hoops kit from eons ago. This is another contender for my oldest whip category. And you can now find this on the Cooler Design Studio website under the name Traditional Sampler. And I actually bought a PDF copy over there because it's compatible with Pattern Keeper. There are a few specialty stitches in here, like, like these things, but for the most part, it's full crosses, so it works really well. And I was having a lot of trouble in these leaves and berries, especially because it's rather confetti heavy for what it looks like. And so it was annoying finding, like I was missing stitches, which is really frustrating when you're starting and stopping already a whole bunch and then you're missing stitches you have to come back just for one stitch so I figured making the investment to buy it um again <laughs> for the convenience of pattern keeper will where it will highlight everything in that color like yes yes please sign me up so I haven't worked on it yet since I've gotten that pdf but um hope is in the future so I would think of, of those two antique shoe collection and this sampler that are contenders for my oldest whip, this one might get finished sooner because I have that possibility of doing it in Pattern Keeper. I don't know if I've done anything since you've seen this, but it's possible. We'll compare it, shall we? This is on the called for fabric, but it is a 28 count even weave. Mostly two over two, full cross, and then a little bit of uh, specialty stitches. So like this heart has some specialty stitches, and then the bar Bargello stitches, and then this is like a four-sided stitch. So there's a few, but most of it's just full cross. Hmm. So I'm not sure if there's any progress there or not, but I thought I remember working on this not too long ago, but I don't know when it was. And it has not yet come out this year, this calendar year. So if it came out in the final quarter of last year, it's possible there was an update. Then we have Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions Needleworks. A really pretty one. Again, lots of specialty stitches. I, I don't know how much of this I've done since last time. But I'm still going to show you. <laughs> I've done a little bit, I guess. Not a lot. This is the called for fabric. 32 count bisque linen by uh, Lakeside Linens. 
but it is a DMC conversion that is called for in the pattern. It calls for, I think, D Dinky Dyes or DMC or one other one. And I'm doing the DMC. And it's really pretty. Every other band is specialty stitches. So there's cross stitch, specialty stitch, back and forth. And then I have a cross stitch band currently underway. And I have reached this corner. So now everything will be the same length until we hit the bottom corner over here. So a ways to go, but it's really pretty. I do like this when I get it out, but it just doesn't come out that often. Again, I'm hoping with the my plans for this coming year, I'm hoping to be able to touch everything for two or three days, full coverage for three days, non-full coverage for two days, which is more than nothing. So I think I'm excited about that. And then I have my Winter Wonder Lamp Band Sampler, which is a Chatelaine, not a traditional Chatelaine. It's band sampler style, but this is the mock-up. And I have done some more on these animals. So I know I have had some progress done, which is nice. This is on 32 count ice blue linen by Zweigart. And I started it in 2017, so that's what you see there. But I'm, I'm thinking when I finish it, I'll put the year I finish it in the bottom little scrolly bits to show like together, you know. So I've done some more of the animals. I believe the squirrels are done. And yeah, so a little bit more on this one, not a ton more. This is one that if I, again, just put my mind to it and gave it a week or two, it could be done. But there's a lot of them. <laughs> and that's the problem is putting it a week or two on one thing means that's that many days that other things don't get any attention. So it's always a, it's always a, a decision that needs to be made. It needs to be made. So I do have one after that this year, Year in Stitches. It's my final one in the sampler category. And this is the one I'm using for my travel piece this year. It's by the Victoria Sampler and it's one of their creative designs patterns. And I have my uh, Fancy Floss. Not really a conversion because they don't give you colors to begin with. They give you a color pattern and then you just fill it in with whatever actual threads you choose. So I picked my palette and have just gone with it. So this is where I'm at with this one. A little bit of progress on this yellow since you saw it in my update video a couple days ago because I'm working on this in the car. This is really pretty. I'm really enjoying this. They have a little block for every month slightly different sizes so the smallest is i think 45 by 45 and then these ones are i mean 40 by 40. these are 45 by 45 this is 50 by 50 something like that i can't remember exactly how it is but they're all 40 high <clears throat> yeah but it's been fun working on this i am a little behind as you can see because i should be working on september right now and i'm in july but we will get there. Hopefully I'll have this finished for before too long into the new year because I have another one I want to start to work on in the car. I have Victoria Sampler that's currently available on their Facebook group like this one was last year. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that's everything in the sampler category. I will come back tomorrow and film full coverage and full coverage, no background, and then wrap it up. So with that, see you tomorrow. Hi, I'm back. Today is Thursday, September 29th, 2022. And today is the day I'm filming all my full coverage projects. So we're going to start with my smaller category. That's technically a full coverage project. That's the way it was charted, but I'm taking the background out either myself or it came that way. So the fabrics are pretty and intend to be the background instead of 
a stitched background. And I have eight of them right now. I have one in the wings that's kitted up but not started. And I don't know if there's anything else, but for now, it is a fun choice that I've been making on some of my pieces that the background is just relatively plain and then it will save me a lot of stitch stitching time. So I've done that a few times now. So let's jump in. These are alphabetical as well. I gotta find them in my um, in my folder. <laughs> so the first one is Butterfly. I've been calling it Butterfly Cat because for some reason it's just called Butterfly. This is a Max Colors version. It is charted with no background. So I didn't have to do that myself. And I'm using Nessie by coloring by uh, Picture This Plus. 28 count cashel, which I guess is linen, but it's, it's going okay. <clears throat> so this is, um, it's never as blue as it is in real life, but this is my, where I got to. I don't think I have anything on this from last year. So this is a new start since, since my last whip parade in September. So I just have the top of the kitty cat. And <laughs> speaking of kitties, every time I come in here, she decides, oh, it's time for me to come be with you because you have the door shut. So one over one, full crosses. I feel like on, when I'm taking the background out, I feel like full cross is needed to make the edge look right everywhere. Um, but a lot of my actual full coverage pieces, I've chosen to do a half stitch to simplify the, or to speed up the process. Not always, but sometimes. There's a, it's kind of complicated <laughs> how I choose <clears throat> if I do a full cross or a half cross on my regular full coverage pieces. Sometimes it's based on fabric. Sometimes it's based on mood. Sometimes it's just <clears throat> how I feel like the elements in the piece would look with a full cross versus a half cross. So a lot goes into that choice. Um, my next one is Butterfly Rose Cross <coughs> by Bridget Ashwood. This is another Heaven and Earth Designs. This one is the mini version and I'm taking the background out myself on this one. I felt like I could have more control over what that process was by doing it myself. And I think I already had this. So I figured I'd just go ahead and do it myself. I didn't necessarily like the way that their no background version was. And I was also waffling a lot about whether or not I wanted to stitch the background because it is nice. I do like the background here. Um, but eventually I got this fabric and thought, you know what? That would look really good with that butterfly rose cross. So this is um, 28 count even weave that I got from... Oh, what are they called? I forget. I will put it on the screen where I got this fabric. They're um, mom and daughter floss tube and they've been dying. They dyed some fabric every once in a while. So this is the start of that one. As you can see, it's um, got some sticks of the top of the cross as well as the outline of a butterfly already right here. So that's really fun. Have some thread on my needle. This is, again, all of these are more aqua than per in person. But there's that. One over one on 28 count, full cross, as is probably most of these. Um, no, just kidding, let's see. Yeah, two of them are not on 28 count. I'm gonna go let Smokey in and I'll be right back. All right, I have another kitty coming up. You can sense a theme, I do like my cats. Um, this one is called Cherry Kitten, and this one was also charted with no background. I felt like they did a good job of that. And it, there's also a version on, this is by Artisee, there's also a version that has like blue sky and, and puffy clouds. So that's also a cute version. But I had been gifted this fabric by, let's see, it's Pole Stitches fabric called Cosmos. And it was kind of a small piece and I was like what should I do with that <clears throat> here's Smokey <laughs> and 
and I was looking through this, um, I thought, well, it's 28 count, one over one would be fun to do something on, and was looking through Artisy and saw this one and thought, you know, that'd be really cute. And it just fit. So this is really pretty fabric, purples and blues and whites, so it kind of looks cloudy, <clears throat> like the original background. I have worked on this since last year, so you can see some difference. Got some eyes in there, super cute. So I like that one. That one's adorable. It's always fun to bring out. Hi, cutie. Yeah. Yes, uh, in my update video, people, somebody said they heard her purr, <laughs> which is so fun. When she walks here in front of the camera, it's she's closer, so it makes sense you could hear her. She has a pretty loud purr. It's pretty fun. Okay. And then Crazy Wonderful Owl Family which I love working on. I never get around to it, but I really, at some point would like to focus on this because this um, is another one, Heaven and Earth Designs. And as you can see, the background is very plain, pretty easy to take out yourself. Um, this represents my family perfectly. My husband, favorite color blue. Me, my favorite color is pink. My oldest son, favorite color is green. My younger son, my middle son, you know, well, younger son, I guess, middle child. His favorite color is like, was yellow, now it's orange. He's very silly, so upside down is perfect for him. And then my youngest is a daughter whose favorite color is purple. I It couldn't be more perfect. So I have to do this. And she's in our dirty clothes hamper, settling in for a nap. What are you doing, Key? Don't mess with that stuff. This is on 28 Count Glacier by Picture This Plus in Lugana. So here is this. Let's see if I can get it any more. Yeah, so I don't know that I've worked on this anymore since last time. Maybe a little bit. Um, if not, I want to get it out again. But that's kind of one of the problems with these no background um, full coverages is they don't really fit any particular category. They're not full coverage anymore. Um, they're not samplers, they're not, like, it, it's hard to find a spot to, to plug them in, in unless you just do. So this coming year, you know, definitely want to make sure I get to all of these, at least a little bit. And this one at some point might end up being a, a focus piece more often just because it's perfect for my family and I want to get it done. So. Let's see. Next we have Cupcake Dreams, which was a freebie on the Tilton Crafts website. Um, it's no longer there. They don't have a freebie section anymore because they switched websites and never brought that section back. It may be av available again at some point. If you really like it, you could probably email them and just see. Maybe they still have it. So this one was charted with literally white stitches all around the outside. So I said, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna stitch those. And I had this pale green, um, I, I'm calling it mint, but it's Jubilee fabric. And I chose to do it on that. And I'll put it up against this white so you can see that it, it is green. And I did work on this maybe during Arbitrary August. So got some of the strawberries um, worked on. I am doing a top down, left to right method of choosing symbols. So you can see this top bits are completely filled and then I'll just use the string, you know, wherever it goes. Yeah, so that's fun. Did get some progress on that one. It's pretty small, so not, not just something you would whip up because it does take a while with all the different, you know, confetti and everything, but it's very cute. Could eventually be finished in my lifetime. <laughs> All right, and then I, oh, I turned right to it. What are you doing back there? <laughs> I started this recently. It's a freebie that is currently on the Heaven and Earth Designs website called Harmony. And while I like this watercolor background quite a bit, um, it's not, I had a fabric that I didn't know what to do with because it's a 28 count. I was gonna put a Mirabilia on it and decided I didn't want 
zest because all my Mirabilia's are on 32 count. So it'd be like the one odd one out. And so I thought, well, I'll, I should do a, a you know, a full coverage on it, but it's too pretty to completely cover. So I thought, well, let's try this one. It, Cause it's got kind of a, a this more this green, um, slight modeling. So I thought that could be good for like a rainforest background. And I will stitch just the parrot. Hi. Yeah, you're all over the place, huh? So this is um, Holiday Mint by Color and Cotton. A 28 count Lugana. And it is quite bright. And as you can see, there is some modeling and movement in it. So that it'll make it fun for, uh, um, what do you call it? rainforest leaves. So I got started at the top and did a good amount of these like edge stitches as well as some of the fill in on the top of the parrot's head. So not a bad start. And so that's a fun one. Hi. Hi, you finally settled down? Just in time for me to be almost done with this section and then I'm going to go Change everything up and disturb you, and then you're gonna walk around again. <laughs> Guess we'll see. Maybe she'll settle in and just be happy that way. Okay, and then we have my um, husband's piece. It's still a secret. This one was another one that I, I bought on eBay years ago, and the seller's no longer around. It had this background and this inside charted with solid white. I said no, not doing that. Um, this paper around the edge does have a variety of colors in it, so I am stitching that. But I chose white fabric, and this part and this part I'm leaving blank. So, and I think I will stitch his shirt too, just to have it be, and their eyeballs, you know, things that are an item, I will stitch white, but not the background. This I'm doing on 40 count Vertil even weave. No, just kidding. Yes, I guess I didn't update that. I originally was stitching this on 32 count and I didn't like the um, coverage of 32 count, one over one, half cross. So I switched it to 40 and I didn't update my spreadsheet. So I gotta do that, I guess. So here is this one. And I don't know, oh, I did. I think I did do a little bit of, on this since my last whip parade. I think I filled in some of Maggie and maybe some more up here. So this is 40 count vertical, one over one, half cross. So this is an example where I am using a half cross, but the stitches are so small that it doesn't really matter because you can barely see them anyways. <laughs> so I am doing a half cross with a no background pattern. But, and the next one is the same way because it is also on 40 count vertical. Although this was a fabric that was uh, hand dyed and gifted to me and I thought it would look perfect for this pattern. So this is Tea and Books by, uh, again, Bridget Ashwood. She's the same designer that did the Butterfly Rose Cross. And this background is appropriate, but not necessary to stitch. So I am just gonna stitch the books and the, the teacup and the butterflies. So all things I like. So far, I don't think I've gotten to this this year yet, and I just have the steam, and I don't know that I've done any more, but we'll see. Maybe I did some at the end of last year that I'm not remembering. Oh yeah, maybe I did, or, or maybe not. <laughs> so this is 40 count days gone by. It's very splotchy, um, but I think it'll be a good background. And you can see barely, you know, there's a steam, rising up. Thankfully that ended up in a spot that was tan. And then you can also see some, uh, you know, across here is the start of where, where to go up the cup. And then I think this is maybe some bits that are over by a butterfly. So I definitely need to get back to this and do more of this so you can start to see the actual items. Um, and in the steam, I chose, if you were to stitch it with the background, there's a another color or two that you could stitch in the steam, but I decided to opt with just the one white color because I felt like the other ones wouldn't really show up on my fabric anyways and weren't necessary. 
and it was a little bit harder to tell where they started and stopped and where the background was and so I just thought I'm just gonna do white and call it good and then move on to the rest of it and it'll be easier um, edging choices for no background versus background on the rest of the stuff. So that steam was the trickiest part. So I just chose white in case you're wondering. All right, so that's all eight of my no background full coverage pieces. So they should be done a lot quicker <laughs> than my full coverage pieces because background takes a long time. Um, and a lot of pieces it's needed. There's items in the background or it's it sets the mood or what have you. So I don't always take it out, but every once in a while it's like, yeah, I don't need to stitch that. So. Um, let's regroup slightly and then I'll come back with actual full coverage. I have 31 of those and um, my largest category of all of my projects is full coverage. So, and I have three more that I want to start and then one this month, one sometime before the end of the year, ideally, if, and then another one for New Year's. So I have a problem. <laughs> I just really love those, those, um, designs and seeing them come together stitch by stitch and it's just fascinating to me so I want to stitch them. Hi kitty. Yeah. Here's Smokey. Getting all happy. Yeah. Yeah. Happy as we can. All right so I'll be back in a sec. All right I'm back. They're all here and there's a lot of them. <laughs> this is my largest category of projects. Um, 31 projects. <sighs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> First off, alphabetically, is African Woman with Peonies 2. I think there's a second, a different one. This is by Artisy. And a couple friends were starting this, and I just thought, you know what? That looks really fun. And I liked that, that it was fairly small. So I thought, let's go ahead and stitch that. <laughs> so I chose some 25 count prim vintage cloth that I had left over from the prim stitch series and started that. So this one has seen some progress since last time. This is two over one half stitches. So it goes pretty quickly and you can see the outline of some of the things already if you look closely. So we have the flower, her hand is right here. There's some flowers coming in slowly right here, but then this is her head and her forehead. So her head wrap thing. But I have reached the end of the piece, so not too big. And it's fun that you can still see a good amount of detail in something fairly small. So kudos to Artisy. So that's a fun one. And my goal this year has been to put a thousand stitches on all of these. And they are on my full coverage whip go board except for Knitting Woman, because that has been a focus piece, and there's only three on here, because I haven't started one yet, but all the montages um, by Pain Free Crafts, the different seasonal ones, those were not on my Whip Go board because they were started this year. Um, and I don't know if that gets, that probably doesn't even get it down. What else was not on there? There was a couple other starts in here too that maybe just didn't make it on there. So anyways, that's why I think I had enough to fill a board exactly at the beginning of the year, but now I have more. <laughs> so there's that. So next one is Quick Stitch April Fairy by Hannah Lynn. This one's really cute. This is the only one that I'm purposefully parking still. And as of now, I'm still enjoying this method. It's, it's a fun experiment. It's very slow, but it's neat. And like, it's a very precise parking method. I have a I have a, web, a video that kind of explains how I do this. It's what I understand um, Brian Blitzstitch, his method of diagonal parking is like, at least it's similar to that. That's how my brain interpreted it anyways. And so that's the way I'm doing this. So it is a little bit slower, but it's been fun. And I have no plans to change my method at this point. It's fun to have one going like this. And so far I'm enjoying how this is looking and seeing it come together in this way. And I don't know if I've worked on this yet this year, I may have. This is on 28 count Rose Monaco. And you can see all the park threads 
and all the red streaks coming through on her hair, which are really fun. One, uh, one over one full cross on the 28 count. I'll try to remember to tell you what I'm doing all of these on. Because it does vary. I don't have just one thing all the time. A lot of, they're, they're quite different sometimes. I have some favorites, but um, different projects kind of lend themselves to different types of things. So that's on a montage. I don't have that yet. Let's see. Bear Time Stories is my next one. This is mini Bear Time Stories, also Heaven and Earth Designs by Randall Spangler. I started this for my son, the same one that likes the that I'm doing the dragon ride for. Um, this he likes dragons and teddy bears and books, so this is for him. I've I realized that I'm doing a non full coverage and a full coverage like major piece for all of my kids. Both of my daughters are finished. Go figure. <laughs> one of my oldest sons is finished, and neither of this sons are finished. So I gotta get on that. I neither finished this one or dragon ride pronto. So here's this one, Bear Time Stories. This is on 40 count Vertle Even Weave, one over one, half cross. And I'm doing this more or less extreme cross country. Every once in a while, I'll pick a color for a, for a challenge and then just do that in a certain area and go on to another color. So I think I've abandoned the, the extreme cross country a little bit, depending on how I'm working on it. If I'm not doing it for a particular theme, you know, I might ask my son what he wants me to work on or um, pick a color and just do as much of that color as I can. So I have done some more on this one and he's super cute. I did some of his face and the little dragons are starting to come out. And there's some marbles down here that I've put in as well. So, and some more of his feet. That one's a fun one. I like that. It's, it's, surprisingly easy to work on for being 40 count so I don't know there's something about this one that's this enjoyable okay then we have mini bird song Tatiana Fedrova another heaven and earth designs and I have a larger picture here for you because I felt that picture was too small so um this is another one 40 count Vertle one over one I believe this is the first one I tried using this fabric on and fell in love with it and then used it on some other things. So I have some needle thread on my needle. This year I did finish my parked threads. I just recently worked on this one too, I think in July or August. So all the parked threads are finished and super happy to be able to go forward and fill, fill it in without worrying about those threads. So you can start to see some of the bird coming in right here and this first page is done, but then the rest of this, I was mainly just finishing out my parked threads and that's what happened. And now I'm gonna, you know, start going across the top and filling in from the top down at this point. So this is the edge of the design. So yeah, pretty cool. And when you do it on 40 count, it ends up being really small. <laughs> Okay, next we have Cat Alphabet, which is a Heaven and Earth Designs, and this one's really fun. They have, um, this artist also has some oh, at Heaven and Earth Designs with, that are just the individual letters, and I believe they are charted slightly bigger than the letter would be in this design, so it has a little bit more detail, but if you wanted to pick just one letter and do that, that's another option, or they have this, this uh, top block cut out all by itself. Those would probably be considered quick stitch versions. Um, but I thought it was too cute. I'm doing all of it. <laughs> it's fairly large and I don't have a very big start, but if you want to see a great start, you can go over to Carol Carolyn Zook, C. Zook Stitch. She's working on this and she spent a good amount of one of the months recently, I can't remember which month, one of the summer months working on this every day and it's looking amazing. She's got a big chunk of this first cat alphabet section done. I spent um, one main stitching session when I started this and just did about a thousand stitches and that's all I've gotten. So this is 28 count. I guess I'm gonna need to hold it up. 28 count ivory Lugana, one over one, full cross. I felt like full cross was needed to make sure I get 
the details I need for all these things. So what I decided to do on this one is do each block as its own chunk, left to right, top to bottom, choosing symbols. So within, I believe I got to the edge of this first chunk with the, the top row is all the way finished. So I think that's really cool. Next time I pull this out, I'll be able to go back to the second row and fill in any symbols, pick those symbols next and fill those in where they go and kind of work, work my way down that top like title block. And when the title block is finished, I'll move over, over to the A and do left to right, top to bottom within the A. That's kind of how I'm planning to tackle this one. This large piece of Lugana had been used for Empress Eugenie, which you'll see in a minute here. Um, but I didn't like it. I was doing that a two strand half stitch and it felt like it was too loosey goosey and threads were slipping and it wasn't, it was too warpy. So I thought I need to wait and save my Lugana for um, full cross projects. So I restarted Empress Eugenie on some Monaco and then I'm doing cat alphabet full cross on the rest of the fabric. So, and I think I've used some of that fabric for, um, I think his name is Jesus was on a, a part of that too, you know, things like that. So I'm using it for other stuff. Um, and Elegant Lady with a Bouquet is the next one. <clears throat> this is the one I'm thinking of doing with a no background that I haven't started yet. But here's Mini Elegant Lady with a Bouquet. I thought this was really pretty and I I think I'm a sucker for Emile Vernon's artwork because I think I have at least three of his things <laughs> already started in here. This is the first one alphabetically. Not the first one I've started, but <clears throat> I do enjoy this one. It's the mini, so I like that things are coming together pretty quickly here. This one is on 25 count barley uh, vintage cloth, which is a cream color. And I believe I got to the edge, or at least very close to the edge, maybe a little bit more. Um, one over one full cross. I believe I started this one because I had finished Quick Stitch Iris last year, and it was a one over one on 25 count. And I really like one over one over on 25 count. Working on that Quick Stitch Iris piece was a joy. And actually, of all these 31 projects, at the time it was less, but this is the only one i'm like i need another one that's 25 one over one so i thought i'll start this one so this is 25 one over one because it's mini um i figured i could go ahead and do the one over one and not worry about sacrificing too much time some of the other ones i've chosen are large designs so i choose a half stitch for to help me get through them a little bit quicker so i can see progress faster um but since this was a mini i thought it'd be fine to do it with a full cross. So then I can have another 25 count, one over one on the go. So this is the only one of all of these that's that's like that. I know some people that's almost all they do. It is a really nice um, choice to make for your coverage and everything, but since I prefer half stitches a lot of times, 25 is a little, just a teeny bit light on the coverage for a half stitch. Um, so that's why I prefer 28 count for the most part for my full coverages but <clears throat> anyways that's that's a still fun one and it is a joy to work on so 25 one over one if you are interested in moving down like lower than in a higher count than Ada that's a good choice um a lot of people really like it um with one strand <laughs> so here's the Empress Eugenie I was talking about before that I had restarted um this I, I'm taking the top row off and I believe um this row yeah the last column top two rows there's two rows of background up here before you get anywhere near the heads so top two rows of background and top in the last column here i'm cutting out and this is a golden kite and it is if i were not cutting this stuff out um it would be my largest width but because i'm cutting that stuff out a different one is actually my largest but this one is still very very big <clears throat> this is now on 28 count dove gray Monaco. And here's where I'm at to, got to. I don't know if I have done any more on this yet this year. I might have, but this looks a lot similar to what I did, what I showed last year. So we'll see. You will know by the before and afters. 
If any of these do not have progress pictures, they will see time um, before the end of the year because all of these that have been that were started before the first of the year have a spot on my WIPCO board. So they will they will see some attention before the end of the year, assuming I can keep up on WIPCO. This is a really hardy tube here. Some serious, <laughs> serious wrapping paper. Maybe this was for something else. I don't know. <clears throat> All right, next we have end of the ball, another golden kite. Um, this one I'm doing on 24 count Congress cloth. And I do remember working on this some this year. Let's shut this and pull it up because it is a little bit see-through. I have two pieces I'm, I did on, I'm doing on Congress cloth and it's, it's pretty fun. Oh yes, I remember this. So this is on 24 count Congress cloth, one over one. I mean, just kidding, two over one half stitch. And the Congress cloth is a canvas, so it's very stiff and able to hold up under the weight of the half stitches. So I did some more along the top to be good girl with my typewriter, but then I came down and worked on the people and you can see the man's face already right there, which is really cool. So pretty fun. It's, it's so enjoyable to me to actually get to the main project, main, main characters, and then working on the background is more fun when I have something else to look at too. <clears throat> All right, then we have the flower garden, which is um, Emile Vernon number two. <laughs> Let's see. The fitting, I haven't started that yet. Here's the flower garden. And by the way, this, this is just a regular folder. I hole punched all of the cover pages of everything I have in Pattern Keeper. That's the criteria it takes to get in here. Because I don't want to be always like trying to hit the right button and then show you on the, on the device. So I just print out the cover pages and keep them all in here. It's easier to show on the videos. And just to flip through and see at a glance what everything looks like and what I have. So this is another one by Emile Vernon, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And this is my largest whip because I'm not cropping anything. She goes almost to the edge of everything. I guess I could crop off some of her dress and who knows by the time I get there, that might happen. Cause yeah, the bottom is just, you know, plain white dress and plain steps. So it's possible I might cut off like the bottom thing and make it more of a square, but we've got a long way to go before we get to that point. So I don't need to make that decision yet. This is on 28 count rose Monaco, two over one half stitches, because I need all the help I can get at making this. It is, yeah, quite pink. Um, I need all the help I can get going quicker on this one because it is going to take me forever. <laughs> but it's, uh, I'm filling in the background. I believe I was working across the top, you know, filling in, filling in the symbols. I think I did a little bit more on this since last time. But it is slow going because there's a lot of confetti. Emile Vernon's backgrounds are no joke as far as confetti goes when they get converted to cross stitch. Then we have Friends of the Library. And this is one last year I didn't show because I think I had a little picture in the corner because I was in the process of converting this one. This one was a um, needlepoint kit put out by Busilla, I think, came with yarn and canvas that was printed. I was trying to like it and I just didn't. I just didn't like it at all. So I went through, I'm, when the canvas is printed, you feel obligated to stitch it exactly how it's colored on the canvas, but yet my analytical brain wants to follow the pattern. And in this case, the pattern was actually fairly blocky, some needlepoint, kits are more amorphous and then it's you just end up following the canvas and it's not as much of a problem but here I could tell the pattern had it where you could tell it was like five stitches across and this only showed four or it was off from a different section it was just messing with me I needed it to be exact <laughs> so I went to the trouble of recharting the pattern in my charting software stitch by stitch it took a long time and then now I can use it in Pattern Keeper. And then I'll go back 
and use the actual PDF to do the back stitching. But so much happier now. So before I was just along the bottom, for some reason I started at the bottom, I don't even know why. Maybe because it was more clear cut than up here, but this time I'm doing my typical top to bottom, left to right, typewriter started at the top. And I'm doing it on 18 count Ada. Because there's back stitching, I wanted to make sure it wasn't too small because I need those details to come out. And um, I converted the, all the wools. I sat down side by side with my DMC box and converted all the tapestry wool to floss. And this is my restart on 18 count antique white Ada, two over one full cross. So there I am. I, and I have all the way across the first couple rows there, uh, the, the whole width of the design, and you could even see the start of a book there, the edge and then the papers. So pretty sweet. Really happy with this now, and I know going forward I will enjoy working on it. So, And it's a lot smaller <laughs> and easier to work on than that stiff canvas with a continental stitch, which I don't like. So win-win. Restart successful. Um, ooh. Sneak peek, that's what I want to start for New Year's. Quick Stitch Grand Library Romance. Just a crop of the larger Grand Library. Jessie Marie, I believe, is starting the entire Grand Library. So if you are interested in starting any portion of the Grand Library or work on the one you've already started, New Year's. Be there or be square. <laughs> All right, Grapes 2 is a, another golden kite. This one has a good amount done on it. I used to have this as my travel piece, actually, and have memories of working on this during flag football practice and in the cold, you know, by the lights of the, the field and working on it at um, little girl ballet practice. <laughs> so yeah, I took this everywhere. I had a floss box in my bag with all the colors. There are 200 colors, including blends. This is on, but because it was uh, Ada, 18 count, it was fairly easy to see. So see, I got a lot of the part threads worked in since last time, but they're not 100% worked in yet. And this is 18 count Fiddler's Ada, two over one, full cross. And really love this blue. I love the wood grain and the plaster and the cracks in this leaf like it's it looks so good so i just need to keep going on it this is one of the full coverages that could be finished sooner than later because it's it's pretty far along and relatively speaking there's not as much left as some other ones <laughs> so it's a fun one so but my my first goal on this one next time i bring it out you know is to continue working in those part threads i had been enjoying it um, but I tried it on this piece a couple different ways. I tried vertical, horizontal, and it, it, I just was running into trouble both ways. And then finally decided, and then pattern caper came out. Like, you know what? I'm just going to abandon parking altogether and not do it anymore. <laughs> Cross country is my jam. So next we have Hibiscus Fairy, which is a new start since I've seen you at last Whip Parade. This is a Heaven Earth Designs. I believe I started this for my birthday last year. I'd for, kind of forgotten what I did for my birthday, but then going through all my projects. Oh yeah, I think that's what I started. So this one is super pretty. I felt like, cause it's kind of a, a line art cartoon looking drawing. I felt like it needed full crosses. So I'm doing this one on some mushroom. Feels stiff. So maybe this is Monaco as well, but it is one over one, full cross. I'm working my way across the top. I don't believe I have gotten to the end. I, the end is probably over here somewhere, but I have started all the reds and pinks. One over one, full cross on 28 count tea dyed Monaco. And I think this is stiff stuff. So I think I got this out of a, a roll, like at the Fat Quarter Shop or something. Um, and the sort of thing you could get in a craft store. Um, be careful with Monaco. Occasionally it is uneven, like the MCG textile stuff was uneven. So just if you're in the craft store looking at it, you can, you know, bring a ruler or a tape measure with you and check it, check the weave. Because if you're doing something where the, 
the squareness of it matters. You'll want to you'll want it to be more even than sometimes those fabrics can be. Where one side will be 20, it'll say it's 28 count, but one direction will be, um, I think the linens were like this. It would say something in one direction would be 32 stitches per inch, and the other direction would be 25 stitches per inch. So then your finished product is going to be skewed. Um, so just be careful. <laughs> Um, it depends on the product and when you bought it because some of it's fine. So, um, then this is another one I'd like to start before the end of the year, Hidden Harbor. I have the fabric down there cut and ready to go. Maybe Hummingbird is not started. Knitting Woman, this is my next one. This has been, um, shown many times over this past year. So if you watch my channel regularly, you've seen this one and it's fun to see when I went back and watched my last whip parade how much I really have gotten done this year so pretty cool it is still a goal of mine that hopefully I can get to to finish this this year so here this one is next to where it was last September two over one half stitches on 22 count Ada I would not recommend this combination for the coverage that you can definitely see through it especially in the dark colors but when I was picking this up I was just experimenting with what I liked uh, to do half stitches on and this piece of fabric was the perfect size so I went with it but you can see a lot of fabric show through um, in the dark colors especially so if that bothers you definitely don't try this but you can see the cat starting to come you can see her hands are pretty much done and what she's knitting is starting to come into focus. And there's some um, balls of yarn there at the bottom that are starting to come in too. So getting lots of colors completed and lots, lots done since last time. <sighs> I have not yet worked on this this week. So this is exactly where you saw it at my update video on Monday. But I've been trying to work on getting my whip go project a uh, goal done before I filmed today and it's been really busy <laughs> so not a lot of time La Soiree this is one that I recently worked on another golden kite this is the medium version there are three I think three sizes of this one and I'm cropping off the top row and the side um column to make it more focused in on the main characters and this one recently, I finished up the parked threads and got a little bit put in on the main character, the first main character. This one, for some reason, is the hardest to make straight. So you can have some, some stitches all the way down there. So I'll try to get it steady here for before and after all the Part threads are worked in and you got the start of the hair of the first girl. So that's really fun. This is 24 count Congress cloth, just like end of the ball, two over one half stitches. So yeah, there's a few stitches all the way out to here and then some scattered all the way down to here to finish out threads. And then, but I'll, I will in the future keep picking symbols going, going across the top. With occasionally popping down to work on the girl because you know that's fun okay next we have the library which is a new start this is mini the library and it's max colors but it wasn't a ton 124 colors so not that much more than um, an original color amount which is around 89 um, like my stitching shelf max colors is over it's like 200 and something crazy so this one I'm like yeah I can do that especially since I work from a master set of floss I'm not going out and buying over 100 colors so I have them all so let's just use them <laughs> so this is on 28 count rose monaco as well and I was doing my typewriter method of choosing symbols and stitch stitching them in so you can already see the start of like the window panes on her on the bookshelf there which is pretty cool this is i believe yeah two over one half stitches on rose monaco 28 count rose monaco 
So yeah, it won't be too big. It'll be a little one because again, it's a mini. So, um, it'll be, it's fun to see on the minis, the content come together faster, but it's also, you gotta be careful because some minis have the original artwork has too much detail for a mini to look good and it ends up just looking like pixelated or splotchy. So certain, look at the mock-up online. If it's a quality company, it should have a mock-up of what the actual stitching will look like um, and see what you think. And some minis look great when they're small and some minis look like, eh, you'd ra probably rather have the full size if you really like the artwork. So just, Take it one one piece at a time and decide which one you're you're happy with. Um, that's another cute one, but I haven't started it yet. Next is the Love Letter by Golden Kite. This is one that has a smaller version that looks okay, but there's just enough about the details in this one that I went ahead and got the large one. So part of me is regretting that decision because it's very big <laughs> and I've been in background for days. But it is, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it come together. So this is one that's 25 count, two over one half stitches. Um, where should I put these guys? I'm also not thrilled with my fabric because it's getting a little fuzzy. But here is where I'm at. I think I have done a little bit more than last time filling in some of the part threads. <clears throat> so I'll put them up maybe, then you can see what I've done underneath there. So I did again the top couple pages, I think, in the background. And now I'm working in the, it got really confetti heavy in here with these feathers, but don't they look awesome? With the way they're like, um feathery looking <laughs> on the edge and then this yellow was fun to come in to see the the start of the hat the straw hat area so yeah pretty fun it is um a lot of work and i'm hoping my fabric holds up because i'm not this is like 25 count but it might be linen and it just feels like it's deteriorating, like I'm taking too long to finish the project. So hopefully it holds up to actually completing this pro this project. Because it's getting kind of pilly and smells a little musty, but none of my other fabric does that. So I'm a little, it's a little strange. <clears throat> I have one other piece on that same fabric. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Magic of Christmas is a new one I started recently. This is um, another Heaven and Earth Designs. This one is very, very large, 700 by 625. And I didn't want it that big. So I decided to do this on 40 count linen, um, one over one, half cross. It's still gonna be very big. So it's not small, um, but it will be more, manageable size than if I were to do it on 28 count or something. And I found this witch oat linen is actually quite nice for holding its own against my half stitches. So here, this is on, it's a green, pale, what is it? French lace linen. So it's like a pale greeny gray color, not, not pure white. And there's my start, about a thousand stitches with on an icicle in the corner. So it's not super Christmassy yet, but it is started. And I was working along the top picking symbols and some of these just went straight down. So it was conducive to just working on that icicle there at the beginning. So that's my start. 40 count linen, half stitches. And again, like I don't know that I would recommend any linen, like cause some linens might be super floppy and it might end up being more like that Lugana, which doesn't hold up to a half stitch. So you might want to test, see if the linen feels hardy or not. <laughs> this witch oat linen that's stiff is actually kind of perfect for a half stitch project. So, and it won't be see-through once it's done because it's full coverage. So there you go. Ah, the roll just unrolled on me. Come on. 
this is one that might be really nice for that those um magnetic kind of thread holders because it's a brand new brand new fabric so it hasn't memorized the the roll I like to hold it in now my needle is sideways this one's causing us all sorts of trouble so until it memorizes that shape that I like to hold it in it start, tries to unroll all the time okay um then we have the nativity which is a fun one by Donna Gelsinger. This is Heaven and Earth Designs. They have a mini of this as well that I think looks pretty good. I don't know if the mini was available when I bought mine, but I had the perfect piece of fabric for this size. So I thought, well, I need to do it. I think that was my deciding factor, actually. I thought there was a sale. Well, I'll buy it if I have a piece of fabric right now in my stash that I could stitch it on. And of course I did. So <laughs> I bought it and started it. So here we go. I think I have a little bit more done, maybe just along the top there compared to last year. And doing, this is 28 count white Monaco, two over one half stitches. Again, I think the first page is mostly finished and then if not all finished, but then I've been working along typewriter methods since then. I think I had um, part threads on this one too, but they're all worked in. So now I can kind of continue on with my preferred method of choosing symbols with a typewriter method and then stitching cross country with that symbol. And my brain is real happy when I was stitched like that. So there's so many different methods for stitching these full coverage pieces. I encourage you try what you seem, what you think you might enjoy. Um, and if you like it, you know, use it. If you don't, try something else because you never know until you try it. Sometimes I've tried a few different things and sometimes I like it for a while and then I kind of get back into <clears throat> the longing to do it a, the way that I really prefer. And so just kind of, it never hurts to try. If you are really concerned about how different methods might affect the finished product, then maybe pick a, a smaller project that you don't care about quite as much and to try different methods and that's always it could be your experimental piece you know to try all the different things so feel free to try uh, a lot of these i have done multiple methods on and you don't really notice a difference most of the time so just food for thought <laughs> here's another golden kite this is norwegian ship under sale the small version and i felt like on this one the small version had enough detail for me and especially since there's a lot of background it's not as fun to stitch I didn't want to do the big version have even more background but I am looking forward to these blues um Needlecraft Danny is working on this and she's a lot farther along than I am and she's actually gotten into some of the blues I think because she's doing a different like organization of stitching than I am and it's looking real good and she's got a big chunk of this, some of the sales finished. So head over to her channel if you want to see more. This is the same fabric I did the love letter on that I'm a little concerned with its longevity. 25 count linen, two over one half stitches. But I have gotten all the way to the far side of the piece, I believe, using my typewriter method. Actually, no, not using the typewriter method because there are still some gaps along that top row, you see. But I think there was a challenge for... Uh, Terry Lee Craft's birthday a while back where we're supposed to start as many pages um, or projects, you know, as you could. And so I started, I hopped along the top and started all the pages along the top row. So now I'm going back through and kind of filling, filling in the, the top. And you can see a little bit of the shape, the, the colors at least in the, the ship right there that are getting started. So pretty cool. You can see some of the thicker finished stuff up there. Okay, the next one is another new start, quick stitch patchwork quilt room. I think there was a stitch along somebody was doing for a uh, Chiro Marchetti. Can't remember now. And I looked through all of his stuff and this one stuck out to me. However, this is already a quick stitch. So this is already part of a larger craft room. And 
I really just liked the kitty and the teapot and like the quilt and the pincushion and you know the little caddy here of all the stuff. So while this part is pretty, I didn't need it. So I'm actually cropping off a good chunk of the pattern and I'm just doing that little strip at the bottom. So of the entire piece, I'm doing a really small vignette and mine is on 40 count vertical one over one. I didn't actually get a full thousand stitch start on this because it was only a day, I think, that I spent. So I have a goal, if I have time before the end of the year, to finish out my thousand stitches. I don't know if that's going to happen. So, so far, I have just the tiniest little start. One over one half stitches on 40 count. And this is the corner of the cart curtain there in the corner. Uh, right here just this bottom chunk of the curtain. And so right away, just below that will be the flower pot because I've cropped off all the top. So, but I think since I've finished, all of this is pretty thickly stitched already. So the next thing I'll be doing will be going over to do the green in the window. So maybe you'll see more of this before the end of the year, but don't hold your breath because I got a lot, a lot of goals. <laughs> but it's a long and skinny, not long, but it's it's, a small little piece because I'm just doing that little strip down there at the bottom but that's a cute one and I look forward to pulling all of these out next year <laughs> for more love and then we have mini princess of the sea by Donna Gelsinger again and this is the mini version, another one I felt like had plenty of, uh, um, this is a blow up of the mock-up and you can see it's pixelated, maybe you can't see, but um, the detail looked nice to me. It's not um, particularly, too. it's not too blocky. So this is very, uh, it's printed with toner save mode. So I think a lot of people are shocked by the vibrancy of my actual piece because they see this and then they see my piece and they're like, whoa, that's brighter than I thought. But that's because I printed it in toner save mode. <laughs> so this is 28 count Dove Gray Monaco. And I may have done more on this since last year, but I got to her face and I love her facial expression. She's so peaceful and sweet. She reminds me of my daughter. And I also have more done in the sky just such pretty colors. Two over one half stitches, if I didn't say already. So I think I was moving along the top to do the typewriter method, but then couldn't resist maybe putting a little bit more on her as well. So that's kind of how I roll with these. Then we have Princess de Broglie, which was a restart a while back. This was my first golden kite and I decided I had a good amount done on this, but it was on 18 count, so it was very large. And then I got the Pattern Keeper, it was retired and then re-released by Golden Kites when I got a updated Pattern Keeper copy. Um, it was different than the original, so I couldn't really mesh them very well. And I thought, you know what, this is a good opportunity. Pattern Keeper is worth it to me. I had her whole face done, but really like, all of this was left to do. So I, I made the decision, restart it on something smaller and crop some of it. So I'm cropping a row off the top and a row, a column on this side. So some of this chair will get missing, but really I love it for her blue outfit. So I'm okay if some of the chair goes away. <laughs> so now it is on 20, this, what is this one? 28 count mushroom even weave. And this is an example of some MCG textiles fabric that was fairly even. So I went ahead and uh, measured it and figured it would work well. Two over one half stitches. So it'll also go a little quicker because of the half stitches. And I believe I'm mostly all the way across the design as, as it is cropped now. So, and I've done a little bit on the top and a little bit on her as well. So she's, she looks a little creepy until she gets filled out, but it does work even though she's yellow and green at the moment, when all of her shading goes in, she looks great. And the blues 
on the on the original one I had some blue in her hair bow done already gorgeous colors so I'm excited to get more of her done and it will I'll see progress flow faster this way too taking out some of the background and do, using half stitch so I'm happy with that restart then we've got Oh, this is another one I'm planning to take the background out and stitch it on a fabric. I have it kitted up already. I'm not started yet though. So there's two of them that will go into that full coverage, no background category to bring that total up to 10 whenever I get those two started. Spring montage is my next one. This is the first one um, that I have to show because I haven't started autumn yet. And um, this is by Pain Free Crafts. There's also some non-full coverage, is it Janlin kids? I think it's Janlin, maybe. Um, who, who did some of the same artwork by Janet Stever as just a regular kit with backstitching and, and not, not quite as much detail. I really liked these versions. So I'm starting all of them and I have not yet started autumn, but that should be rectified this coming not this weekend coming up, but next weekend, I believe is when I'm planning to start that one. So here's the start on spring. I did a, a little over a thousand stitches on all of these to get them started. This is on 28 count mushroom Lugana, one over one full cross. I felt like these had enough details that I needed, I would like the full cross um, detail look. And so I'm doing these full cross and you can already see the start of those little spring flowers there in the corner. So. Some of these I've decided to do my typewriter um, symbol searching throughout the 10 by 10 square rather than along the line. And I think I might continue to do that a little bit more often these days because then you get to see more of a finished chunk and pull in some more colors. Cause like, especially on these montages, the top row is, is just boring border. They've got two or three rows of border. Um, so if you do the 10 by 10 square to pick symbols, and then stitch those in everywhere, you get more of the actual items coming into life. So that's kind of, um, I've done that on the first few, um, on a few projects now, and I really like that. So I might adopt that going forward on more, more pieces. It kind of depends on the piece, because sometimes I still like going straight across. So, um, but that is a nice choice if you um, want to see more happen um, right away. Pick top to bottom, left to right, Pick your symbols within the 10 by 10 square. Um, then we have Stitcher's Retreat, which is what I was just finishing up this morning to try to get my Whip Go Goal finished. So I got it done. And um, former Heaven and Earth Designs freebie, I don't believe it is available there anymore at all. But I have cropped off two rows off the top, two columns on this side, one column on this side, and two rows on the bottom. So I'm just doing this middle chunk and then I've decided the part of the reason I changed it was for size and time but also the background is very dark so it doesn't actually look this pretty um, it's very dark and you'll see even I'm working yeah uh, over here I did a lot of this and it's it's very dark gray it's not this lighter gray so it's it's kind of interesting how they charted it to be super dark um, there might be other companies' versions of this that are a bit lighter. So if you really like the whole piece, maybe look for a company that has charted it with lighter colors. Um, but here's where I got to. This is 28 count Rose Monaco, two over one, half stitches. And I got uh, like 1,122 stitches, I think, that I just finished up this morning. So as you can see, I did a lot of background here in the corner going across the top, I, I chose to, there's a couple symbols here that I chose to wait on because there's just a few um, symbols and I wanted to get as many stitches in as quickly as possible. So I went ahead and just picked colors that had larger swaths of color. And this is actually where the dark stops because there's gonna be the, sh the shine from the lamp is gonna start right there. And then this morning I finished my thread and still needed like, I don't know, 50 stitches or something to get to my Whipco goal. So I thought, you know what, I, I want something fun. So I picked a flesh color in her face and worked in a little bit of her face too. So that was fun. 
So that's that. Just a little bit more on that one. And the next one, as you might expect, is my stitching shelf, which is my other whip go goal I'm trying to work on this week. I have not yet worked on it though. It'll come out today for its first few stitches from this rotation. So this is exactly where you saw it on Monday if you watched my update video. This is on 28 count tea dyed Monaco. I said it wrong in my video, but I have the <clears throat> max color regular size version. This is by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I'm doing it not extreme cross country, but I am stitching it all over the place. So I'm not doing like one color at a time all over the place, but I am stitching all over the place. <laughs> so I will get back and try to get it all in here. I'll do a before picture here so you can see where it was last year. And I don't know how much I've done on it since then, but we'll see if there's any, um, any change. You, you decide. So I think I've got it all in there. There's still some park threads, but as I said in my update video on Monday, because I want to try to get my whip go goals done as fast as possible and move on to maybe get caught up on my under the sea club. Um, I'm going to pick some chunks in here that are more blocky to get stitches faster. So I will not be working on parked threads this rotation, which pains me a little bit because I really want them gone, but I want to get my goal met faster a little bit more. So <laughs> that's the, that's what I'm going to do. And this is not my biggest piece, but it's the one that has the, the stitching completed lower down, you know, like, so I have more of it to show. So that's why I have to hold it back. Like some of my other ones eventually will be as hard to show as this one. I just don't have as much stitched on them. So that one's pretty impressive though, because of how, how much is stitched in all over the place, <laughs> which is really fun to do. My next one is my summer montage, which is also pain-free crafts artwork by Janet Stever. And this one is up here in the rows. And I don't remember if I have any of the rows, but I have some of the leaves done, I think. So this one is also on the mushroom Lugana. Yeah. Um, one over one full cross. And yeah, I just did that 10 by 10 square picking symbols and stitched them until they ran out and didn't actually get any rows stitched, but I got a lot of the green done around the edge, which is really pretty too. But I will really enjoy working on the pink rose because, you know, I'm a sucker for pink roses. <laughs> um, yeah, all three of these are on Mushroom Lugana. I was waiting for some Mushroom Lugana to come in the mail from my um, wholesaler and that I use for my Etsy business. And it didn't come in time to start my first one, which was Winter Montage. So that one is done on white that I had already in my stash. Um, so all the rest of these are on mushroom though. So they're close to the same thing. <laughs> Should be the same size. Next we have three sisters, which another one, this is another one that feels really big, partly because it's on 18 count Ada and also partly because, um, I've stitched farther down, like uh, across a larger chunk. It will be even harder to show once I've get, gotten all the way across. But currently I'm working just on the main, the first girl, which is me. This represents my, me and my sisters. This is me with the blonde hair, my older sister with red hair and my younger sister with dark hair. So mine's darkened a lot, but it's the blondest of them. <laughs> so that's me. I was a lot lighter blonde when I was a, a youth, a little girl. So here's this one as it is now. I believe I worked on this a little bit um, earlier in the year. Got some part threads worked in in the green and did one, at least one more color in her face, I think. So you will see. But this is two over one full cross on 18 count. And I am doing it somewhat extreme cross country, but just within that place. So there are some colors 
in her face that are also in the other girls, but I'm just limiting myself to her. Um, and then when she's done, I'll move on to the other ones. But I'm happy again on this one to get rid of those part threads so I can just stitch without them in the way and um, go wherever I want to, to pick colors and, and to work. But I am, I do like sometimes, depending on my mood, I like working on <clears throat> background and foreground um, to try to break it up a little bit and have some um, necessary stitching coupled with some fun stitching. So next one is Visit Endor, which is the full coverage I am doing for my older son. And this one is, I, I started this kind of because of a full coverage fanatics challenge where I needed to do something with less than, like less than 50 colors or something. And everybody, like all of my projects have at least like 89 because heaven and earth, that's the standard um, number and then it goes up from there. So <clears throat> I either have max color, golden kites are usually 150 to 200 colors. Um, Artisy, I think even had like 90 colors or something. So this one has 11. <laughs> so definitely qualified for that, um, that challenge. What in the world? It's like sealed shut. I need to cut this plastic. It's too tall for this project. All right, here we go. And then this one, I started trying out basket weave stitch on it as well because there's a lot of um, solid blocks of color. So I thought that would be a fun time to start <clears throat> trying basket weave uh, half stitch. This is two over one half stitch on my 28 count Dove Gray Monaco. And I, I have found my Dove Gray and Rose Monaco by the yard from Rita Reen's cross stitch supplies on Facebook. I can link her below. Um, she's low on Monaco right now. I don't think there's, it's easy to find Monaco by the, by the yard right now, but you can always ask. Um, but that's where I found some of my large quantities of Dove Gray and Rose Monaco that you see pop up a lot in this whip section of the whip parade. Now we have Waterfall in Yosemite. And this is another one, it's the mini version. And I felt like the mini had plenty of detail for what I wanted. And it's still quite large, but part of that is because I'm doing it on 18 count. When I started full coverage, I started it with, um, mostly with the Golden Kites. I think Quick Stitch Iris was my heaven and earth design at the time. Um, but I was doing most of them on, um, on this 18 count. And it's really nice, but eventually, I realized, okay, these pieces are huge and I can do them smaller. So let's, let's give it a try. <clears throat> so this one is Waterfall in Yosemite, 18 count antique white Ada, two over one full cross. And I believe I finished the sky since I showed this on my last update video. So that's exciting. And then I decided to do typewriter method once the sky was finished. So you can, so I came down here and filled in this part and down here, but now I'm going back to the top and I'm finishing up, like filling in the, um, like these trees and then the rocks. So wherever the next top to bottom, left to right symbol is, I am doing that now, um, to kind of work all the way across. So that's fun. I only believe I did my requisite thousand stitches on it this year. I'm not focusing on it as much as I was, I think last year, the year before, I was focusing on it more, but it's not colorful enough for me to hold my attention for a long time. So it always tends to fizzle in my interest and kind of kills my stitchy bug. So I don't want that. I do like it. So I'm gonna keep bringing it out regularly with my normal full coverage plans, but it's not gonna, I don't think I should ever make it my long-term focus piece because it just, um, I lose interest eventually, so I don't want that to happen, and I want to enjoy it. Now we have the winter montage, which is actually the first one I started, because I didn't want to do anything in December when the first day of winter falls for, for me, but it's too busy it in life and in my Etsy shop in December, so I thought, let's start it in, I think it was February maybe, still technically winter. Um, so this was actually the first one I started, and then I 
been starting the other ones with autumn will now be the last one I'm starting so this one was the one started on white uh, 28 count Lugana one over one full cross and I started in the top and this is one I was not picking symbols necessarily um, from the 10 by 10 grid yet but I did eventually just pop down and start picking some greens on purpose so that I could see what this was and tell it apart from the other montages and I also have this one is not this one's just a clear thing from Hobby Lobby but my other montages I wrote on if it was in a wrapping paper tube I wrote on it so I could tell they're all on the same fabric I could tell at a glance which which season it is so I wouldn't have to pull it out and look at it um, so that helps too <clears throat> but this being the only one on white and it's in a clear um, a clear sleeve I can kind of see oh yeah that's the winter one so that makes that easy then last but not least is the young gardener this is by the art of stitching but I think I have seen this charted by some other companies I got this as a uh, giveaway actually um, they had something in their newsletter that you could enter it was it was years ago and I actually won so I was like oh sweet but I love this because I have a daughter. <sighs> so the mommy and daddy daughter thing is a uh, is rather sweet to me. And I'm doing this one tiny, 40 count vertical, one over one, half cross. And I believe I have stitched more on this since last year. I think this came out a couple months ago for a Whipco, and I put another thousand stitches in it. I did the typewriter method, I believe. There's still some holes over here at the top, but I think I, I filled in all the rest of this and then pulled those colors down wherever they went. And very scattered confetti. So it's a little bit slow going, lots of counting, lots of uh, carrying of threads, as you can see there. But, but it works and I'm enjoying this. Full width of the design, it's, it's real small. So it's probably like, five inches <laughs> across. So I say last but not least, but this is possibly my smallest finished size full coverage piece. Cause my uh, uh, visit Endor is pretty small. This one's on 28 count. So the stitch count is smaller, but um, ooh, yep. Young Gardener wins for smallest. So Visit Endor is slightly wider because it's on 28 count. This is on 40 count. So this stitch count is bigger on the Young Gardener than Visit Endor. But Visit, I think Young Gardener is my tiniest width <laughs> physically on the finished, finished piece. Because the other 40 count pieces I have are wider than that. So just a fun little tidbit there at the end. <clears throat> wow, we did it. <laughs> So many projects. So this has really been fun. I've enjoyed revisiting all of these, sharing them with you. I have thought about the fact that I'm nearing that 100 mark of projects. I believe this is 96 and I have three things I'm planning to start um, in the next few months. I have an, another Victoria Sampler one I want to start in the new year as well provided I finish my year in stitches that I'm working on. That just, in I don't want to get over a hundred. I feel like that is my mental cap. I, th I think I don't want to go over that. It may happen, but I think that has maybe put some fire in my bones to kind of chip away at some of the smaller ones and knock them off the bottom so that I can feel the freedom to start a few things here and there without being like, oh, one more, you know, because this is a lot. This is a lot. I have a lot of fun things to work on. I don't need anything more. But you know, there's, as you know, there's a lot, always new things coming out that are cute and pretty and irresistible. So part of the fun of my hobby is starting things. So <clears throat> I can't not start things and still enjoy this completely. But I want to maybe rein it in a little bit and be more purposeful about finishing some things that should probably be finished by now. 
because some of the some of these projects will never get finished in my lifetime and I'm okay with that some of them the joy is in the journey and so, but some of them I do want finished and I don't want them lingering for years and years so we'll see how it goes with that I will wrap this up and hopefully get it edited and uploaded in the next day or two and Lord willing, see you again on Monday with an update for whatever I get done on Stitching Shelf and Under the Sea and maybe even Knitting Woman and my travel pieces. So um, hope you enjoyed. Happy stitching. Bye.